Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dome. This is Round Valley hosting the Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets for senior night. Ethan, last game of the regular season. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. Thanks, Wes. Hey, we are taking just a second to do a little bit of pregame. Man, what? somebody found the mic, and they're like, senior citizen situation. you got to worry about them the most. Honestly, it's Grandma Z, I think, that I worry about more than most. If it I'm it was a folding chair on the rail the mic is taped to. Likely so. story. It's a <laughs> likely story. Guys, we're working the bugs out, and we're getting ready to get started. As you can tell, this is the quiet before the storm uh, because I'm not over there running around like a crazy person. So we decided we were going to take a few minutes just to talk about what we've been talking about as we set up. Uh, guys, this is the last uh, game for the regular season. Brackets could come out as early as tomorrow morning. It would be nice because then teams know straight away they got the whole week who they're going to be facing. Usually we see brackets get up or the rankings, excuse me, get updated on Tuesday. But I would imagine we may see a reveal tomorrow. And man, if we had some time, it'd be cool to get together and chat up what the bracket looks like. So maybe, maybe we'll try to do that, Ethan. I don't know what your tomorrow looks like but that would be super fun uh i mean halloween festivities i don't know seems like saturday nights when most people are doing their their halloween shindigs let's do it at the trunk or treat we'll go live at the trunk or treat <laughs> come see us we will talk to all sorts of ghouls and ghosts and who knows what not as we get ready but guys we are here in the dome getting things lined up the teams are warming up we got a little while before kickoff but we just wanted to touch base with you um with what's going on and where we may or may not be here in a week. So looking at the rankings really quick, they were updated this Tuesday. Round Valley went from se 9 to 7. 9 to 7. And So that puts us at a home game for our first round of the playoffs, should that, if that didn't change, if yeah. this was the world. Which is a game. really good spot. Um, I feel like because that kind of puts us sort of in the lower end of the upper bracket. So it kind of gives us a, a nice, ch you know, should give us a, a nice chance. Of course, I think uh, at least one team from every conference, whoever wins, gets in. So I don't, I haven't gone through and checked if there's going to be any wild cards in the top 16. But if if I'm confident in how the bracket works, and I'm pretty sure I am, uh, what we would see then is seven would play ten, correct? If it goes eight nine. 710 because I believe they peel yep. up and down that way. So if it was to happen right now, today, we'd see the Mojave Thunderbirds come into the Dome next week. Uh, I'm not sure who they're playing, if we're, we anticipate a change there. But, guys, a lot of volatility still because uh, here we have Round Valley number 7 playing number 13, Blue Ridge. That could change things as well, right? We could see Blue Ridge um, slide a couple. We could see the – I was looking at the ones that we have right here on the bubble. Uh, we've, you went to Monument Valley, Ethan. I'm not going to bring that up too much. <laughs> I actually thought of you there. But um, right there on the bubble, we got Safford, Monument Valley, Yuma, and, and River Valley. That this week probably means a lot to them moving up or down just a, just a touch. For sure. And uh, it really, tonight means a lot to us because we can't lose this game if we want to secure that that home game next week. Everybody wants a home game in the playoffs or two. Or two would be nice. First two rounds go to high seed, so Round Valley – hoping for that next week here in the Dome and then the next week after that. And then we'd go on the road for um, for semis and for the championship, unless I'm skipping one bracket in their situation. But I believe that would be it. We'd have a quarterfinal game. Uh, also with the high seed, semis at, man, I should have had it up. I think it's Mountain Point High School uh, down in Gil. Sounds right. So we're heading to the Valley either way in two weeks after the regular season's over. Um, Ethan, your thoughts, seeing the team, seeing the changes that we saw last week. We saw uh, a different Round Valley offense. I was able to talk to Riker uh, on the weekend after the game. Just felt like things were dialed in, things changed, things were in a good way. Um, what are your thoughts, you and Scott, as you guys have been chatting it up, looking at things? What are you What are you thinking? So I really like the, the growth Round Valley's had. I think they're starting to peak, you know, getting that massive change up in the running game, bringing in Clark, getting him healthy and getting him – Active. I mean, he's been a game changer in the backfield. And then last week we came out and we really focused on throwing the ball a lot. And we looked pretty good throwing the ball a lot, you know. A lot better throws, better decisions uh, with the throws we made downfield. It was all kind of coming together. And I think that's going to be especially important tonight because from the stats I've seen, um, Blue Ridge seems to be a team you can throw on. You know, they, they're about average on the run, but you – Monument Valley had a lot of success 
against Blue Ridge throwing the ball. Was yeah. that the game that was like 50 to 40, super high scoring ball game, over yeah. 100 points for both teams? And Monument Valley beat them by over two scores. So. Was that game in Kayenta or was that game at Blue Ridge? I think it was in Monument Valley. That would that would make sense, having the home field advantage a little bit yeah. that way. New, new field, beautiful looking it, field as it's well. It's a really nice facility in Monument Valley. I'm not going to lie. It was really nice. Uh, press box, being on top of that, it was a lot smaller than I thought it was going <laughs> to be and directly underneath the speaker. But, hey, other than that, it was great. Nice. Well, guys, if you're just joining us here on the broadcast, we're in pregame mode in the Jody Emerald Sanders Realty pregame show here as Round Valley hosts the Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets for senior night. We've got a lot of seniors here to celebrate at halftime, so stay tuned for that action as we get closer and closer to halftime in that celebration. We got some cheerleaders to celebrate, and I believe even a band member uh, that's a senior this year that we're going to be that we're going to be honoring tonight at halftime. And so stay tuned for that. Uh, if you're just joining us and you haven't joined the herd yet, hit that subscribe button on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on the Facebook, man, you got to reverse the things. Hit the like on our page there. We're also on Instagram, and hey, hit us on Twitter. We've been talking about getting back in the Twitter game because that is where a lot of sports chatter goes. But we're on the socials all at Let's Go Elks. This is a Zero Luck Live production. If you're on Twitch, if you're a cool kid that likes video games, give us a follow on Twitch as well. Um, we took a dive into that and did some streaming on that platform as well, and we haven't been able to get back there. So if you want, hit us a follow at uh, Zero Luck Live. Everything else is at Let's Go Elks. Join us, join us, like, follow, and join the herd here in the last Friday of the regular season. Um, Ethan, any thoughts what we're going to see? Are we going to see a different Round Valley offense? We saw uh, Merrill now on the line. We have saw Brett Jordan play a lot more offense than what we've seen in the past. What do you anticipate Round Valley coming out uh, with the Blue Ridge defense? Uh, I think Round Valley is going to stick to a lot of what's been working. It's going to be a lot more of that moving Riker around, getting him some – you know, getting him some handoffs, getting him some keepers, kind of keeping the defense at home on their toes so then he can roll out and start making those passes. You know, m establishing Riker as a run threat helps you so much out of the backfield. And then having a, a solid running back to hand it up the middle, you know, it really keeps the defense on the heels and they, they've got they got to hesitate just a little bit. They can't just come in, pin their ears back, and just go for it. Whereas, you know, when you look at the defensive side of the ball for the Elks, um, Blue Ridge, they've got a good quarterback, but he is a freshman. He's young, but I, we hear lots and lots of really good things lots about this kid. Lots of great kid. things, but if there's one thing the Round Valley defense can do, it is put pressure on a quarterback. Yep. We have been getting home a lot this season, and, I mean, we had eight sacks last game as a team. So it'll be interesting to see how Blue Ridge tries to adapt to that, how they uh, – handle the pressure we've done we're usually at least around for the tackle um you know in in our our pass coverage so it was definitely a higher energy game when you talk about how many sacks yeah. and Riker being more dialed in on the offense i feel like it was just a higher energy football game more reminiscent of what we're used to the elks with and so it's nice you talked about hopefully they haven't peaked yet hopefully we still got a little bit more hill to climb yeah. but i think they have found a little bit of a groove at least they did last week that is one thing that was super positive from the Elks is they came out ready to play. And I feel like all season long, especially the first half of the season, I feel like coaches kind of struggled to get these boys fired up and ready for that first quarter. We've started slow, we've started timid, and we've had to kind of build up, get our confidence. And we've been playing from behind in our, in our big games, and that's not where you want to be. You want to be out early and get going and then, you know, be able to adapt to that change in situation as you go forward but you say confidence I almost feel like I when you were saying that cohesiveness came into my yeah. mind as well I feel like like you said though that lack of confidence lack of cohesiveness I think early on in the game they've they've got to find each other right they've got to yeah. they've really got to dial in as a team as a unit to make it happen and maybe Merrill going to the line getting that 50 uh, 54 number changing that up maybe that's going to be a difference that really helped bring some pieces together some puzzle pieces moving around we've seen Clark in the backfield more and some good change there right some good yards that we saw to him last week as well and so guys we're we're getting ready for kickoff um, 15 minutes or so we're going to be in and getting ready for 
the first quarter here in the Dome. Again, last game of the regular season, Round Valley hosting the Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets here. It's been a minute. Um, I believe we didn't play them last year, and the year before we played in the snow in Blue Ridge, and that's that's a bit much. The snow was definitely all over the sidelines, but it was a chilly game on those metal bleachers. It was. <laughs> so a uh, little bit different weather pattern situation going on right here in the Dome. So, guys, keep watching. Hit that share button. Let your friends and family know we're getting ready for kickoff here in the Dome. Give a like and a follow. Remember to subscribe. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the bell. And that will let you know when we go live for future broadcasts. Guys, enjoy the rest of the game. I'm going to make a walk about 20 feet that way and get a different microphone on. But I leave you in the great hands of Mr. Ethan Holliday. Scott Madrid, he's down taking some photos. He's going to be up here in a little bit. And we'll get the pregame continued and get ready for kickoff here in the Dome. Guys, enjoy the broadcast tonight. You're watching Let's Go Elks. Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's broadcast. You just got done watching a video of me and Wes doing a little bit of Jody Emerald with Emerald Sanders Realty pregame show. But now we still got a little bit of pregame left. I am joined by Mr. Scott Madrid. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. How are you tonight? I'm doing great, Scott. So last home game, senior night. Um, I don't know. How are you feeling? What are you excited for? We are through another season. It's almost too hard to believe. Indeed. It's hard to believe. I can't believe it. Take a quick moment to thank all the coaches that in this fall season have supported the Round Valley Elk, different teams that they have going on. The Elks are getting ready to take the field. And they're led out by Riley Harlan once again. Oh, look at them Elks run. So I'll be interesting to see. We kind of talked about it in the other pregame. Pre Sorry you weren't here, but uh, Elks starting last week's game off with uh, the high energy that we would like to see right in the first quarter. And so, you know, just hoping that we can continue to do that this week. And looks like we're going to go to the National Anthem. Shout out to the Round Valley Pet Band for that uh, rendition of our national anthem. If that don't get you going, I don't know what will. You were talking about how we wanted to get going a little bit sooner, a little bit faster. Talked to Coach Balka this week after the football game last week, and he said one of the challenges he gave his team was to make a big play on special teams. and. Uh, uh, he wasn't expecting the onside kick return that happened for him. He was pretty excited about it. He said if Kevin Flores had made that field goal, it would have capped off a pretty good night for Round Valley. He was really impressed that they came out early and started quick. Yeah, special teams, that all-important third phase of the game that sometimes doesn't get enough love but is so important in either 
gaining or killing momentum for a team, I feel like. Well, gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to tonight's game. Uh, you're the captains. You're the captains for a reason. You set the example of sportsmanship for all of your fellow players, for your coaches, and for your spectators. So set that example for us as well. That's PJ. My name is Dwayne. If you guys have questions, bring those to us. If there's something you want us to watch for, let us know. I'm going to toss the coin in the air. The back side is the AIA logo. That's going to be the tail side. The red side is going to be heads. I'm going to toss it in the air and catch it. If I drop it, I will toss it again. What is the call? Tails is the call. Landed. Tails. Tails is one the toss. What was your election? Blue Ridge has elected to receive. Blue Ridge has elected to receive. Round Valley, you're kicking. Which direction do you want to kick? You want to kick that way? Stand there by PJ. You guys stand right here by me. Blue Ridge will receive. Gentlemen, shake hands one more time. So the Elks will be kicking off with Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets as we get this game kick, uh, ready to get going. Let's see if we can't uh, take advantage on special teams and uh, pin them back deep on this opening kickoff. Indeed. Another thing I would really like to see happen this week is for Round Valley to cut down on the unnecessary penalties. I don't know how you feel, but I feel like we've been really good at shooting ourselves in the foot in uh, some cru crucial moments, and so if we could cut down on that, I sure would appreciate it. They had a big pe impact on the game last week. I know that the game in the end, in the, end the score was lopsided, but the drives that Page was able to put together, we definitely supported them on one drive, particularly two 15-yard penalties back-to-back -back or in sequence that really gave them advantage to drive on down the field. So you are correct. We need that. If we can clean that up, I think that will really help us off this season. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if there's a, an area we can improve in right now as we've been getting better and better each week, what stands out to me really is the penalties more than probably any, anything. I feel like we've really established our running game. We've got our blocking down. Our schemes have gotten a lot better. And uh, I feel like our passing game showed leaps and bounds last week. So, you know, cutting down on the unnecessaries I think would be a great step in the right direction. This will be a good test for us this evening, uh, getting to play Blue Ridge in the last regular season final game. Kevin Flores has it teed up, and we are ready for kickoff. Flores puts the boot into it, drives it down right to the goal line, and they're going to run it out. You see number 19 on this side getting in on the tackle. Yeah, excellent coverage on that. He's only able to bring it out. 16-yard line. That's got my name right. That's Jose Leon. That there's, is there's two Jose Leons? Oh, you on the tackle. Sorry. There should not be, but Jose is a freshman getting to play on the kickoff team tonight for the Round Valley. So Blue Ridge comes out. They will be led by freshman quarterback Luke Berlin. Hearing lots of good things about this freshman quarterback. Some people saying he's going to be big trouble for a lot of years there in Blue Ridge. He's tall. He's he's poised. He throws the ball well. And the handoff to number 13. And we don't have number 13 on our roster. Big tackle number 54. Trayson Merrill getting that stop. My goodness. I am missing number 13 on the roster, so sorry about that. Any Blue Ridge fans that may be out there. Blue Ridge is going to call their plays at the line. Shuffle in a few players, call the play, and they're right back on the line, ready to set the ball. We have two split to the right, one running back. Berlin's going to throw it out to the flat. That's going to be caught out here by number five. I believe that's Antonelli, the senior. I heard extra Personal whistles. Foul, roughing the passer, number 12 on the defense. That'll be a 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. It'll be a first down. Well, so much for uh, the unnecessary penalties. <laughs> Opening drive, what would have been a third and long, is now a first and 10. 38-yard uh, line. Yeah, at the 38-yard line. 
And I followed the ball and did not watch that hit, so I can't tell you how late it was, but it was called a penalty. So we will move on. Jack, it's right back to the line to call their play. One running back behind Berlin. They're gonna bring a motion man, number 13. They're gonna hand it right up the middle, Jace Barton. He's gonna get about five yards. Yeah, actually about six or seven. Right up the middle, Jace Barton, number two. That is a junior running back for Blue Ridge. Okay, so I went back and watched it. It was late, but he was being pushed sideways by the tackle, so I don't necessarily think he knew he was right there, but still, he hit him late. So, you know, I guess we're going to have to take that one. Berlin back. He's going to throw. It looks like a wide receiver screen cutting across the middle. Trayson Merrill is out there to put the stop on that and slam him to the ground. Yeah, excellent tackle by Trayson. Like that play. Use your line, quick pass out. Use your line to go down to get blocks. Trace Merrill will play in that outside linebacker position, uh, was able to come up and make the stop on that. Yeah, I wanted to show the replay, but Blue Ridge already back on the ball with a little tempo. Too tight off each side. They're lining up. Changing the call at the line. Let's see if they uh, try to draw us off sides. We're gonna snap the ball. Hand it off to Barton. Oh. He's a fumble with the ball. Berlin quickly hops back on that. Brody Ziegler was right there trying to make, or putting pressure on the play. That's gonna bring up a fourth down and about four. Yeah, it looked like a, not a good exchange. Running back thought he had it and then it slipped out. Luckily, court QB able to dive on it. So they're either gonna try to snap and bring this off sides or they're going for it. This tells you how important the game is for Blue Ridge. Early in the game, they're going for it. Within the 45 yard line, they're gonna snap the ball to Berlin, hand it off to Barton. He's gonna put a spin move. And oh, he's not gonna make he's it. He's not gonna make it. Who is that on the stop? Coming in right there, Riker Marble. Riker Marble from the safety position, coming in to lay the hammer. I like it. Beautiful spin by Barton as he got off the side, but Marble was in there to put the stop on him. So the Elks are going to take advantage early. Ball on the 45-yard line of Blue Ridge. Yeah, he looked like he was going to get wide out to that right side and have some daylight, and all of a sudden Riker came flying in on that. Now, something I noticed last night at the JV game, they ran a 3-3 set with basically three defensive linemen, three linebackers. It allows them an extra defensive back to float like a safety back there. So we have two split wide to the top and one to the bottom. Is that number two in the backfield? That is Clark, Clark right up the, right up the left. Oh up my goodness. 11. So here I was thinking that Round Valley was gonna get aggressive with the pass tonight and their first down comes off their first play of the game, a run up the left side to Clark. Good for 11 yards. I think Round Valley has settled in with Kyle as their runner. I ex would expect we would see some Gage Baker as the game moves through here. Maybe some Riley Harlan. We did not see Riley last week, and I expected it, but we did not. All right, Reichel, Riker joined in the backfield by Clark. He's going to hand it right side. Oh, <laughs> Turf Monster got him. Otherwise, he would have picked up a few more, but that's still good for, is that eight or nine? Looks like they're going to give him nine. So Clark up the up the middle for nine. Trinion tricky for Blue Ridge coming up to make the tackle, but Clark would put on a move and his feet just fell out from under him. Something to note about this Blue Ridge team, there are a lot of freshmen and sophomores that make this roster. We'll talk a little bit more that, about that as we go through the game. All right, both teams favoring a, a fast tempo. I'm not going to be able to squeeze in a replay. Sorry about that. All right. Riker's going to fake the handoff to the left. He's going to bounce it out to the right. That's good for 10, 11 yards of his own and a first down on the 14-yard line for the Elks. Seven minutes, 37 seconds left to play in this Treadmasters first quarter. Score is 0-0, Round Valley inside the red zone. Trinion tricky again in on that play, and I couldn't, I thought it was 31. It very well may have been 13 for Blue Ridge. I don't have a 31. I don't, I don't have a 13, 13 for that matter, so. Bringing the man in motion, 11. 
He's going to get the ball. He's going to bounce it out wide. He's going to cut it back inside. Oh, that's going to be good for at least six. Looks like they're going to give him seven on that play. And that's for, is that Dallin, number 11? That is Dallin. Dallin Walker, good for six. Well, it looks like they moved it back to six yards. So it's going to be second and about four right there on the eight-yard line for the Elks. Oh, Gage Baker coming out of the backfield, taking it right up the gut, taking the handoff from Riker. That's good for four yards. That's an interesting exchange right there. That was Trinian Tricky coming up, number eight, putting the hammer on Gage right there, picked him up off his feet, slammed him down. I think there were a few words after that tackle. We're going to see a little bit more of that as we go through this game tonight. I mean, important game for both teams. Blue Ridge on the bubble, doesn't want to drop down any further. Round Valley wants to hold their spot, their first home game for the first playoff. Hand off the left side to Clark. Oh, he running through the initial contact, trying to stay up and then hit hard after. Noah Chi in there on the tackle, and once again, Trinian Tricky. It's easy to see why Tricky is now up on the varsity team for Blue Ridge. That kid's in there making plays. So that was good freshman. for what, about a yard for? I think maybe a yard, given the spot. Now we're down on the three yard line. Third, second down. Gage Baker in the backfield with Riker. We're bunched up on the line, right off the tackle on the left side. Oh, Riker, run, Riker running the option to the right, decides to keep it and duck into the end zone. And that's going to be good for our first Realm Riders touchdown of the game. That's going to put Elks on the board early, 6-0 to zero over your Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets. Hey, that was a thing of beauty. It was a good start. It was an interesting formation from uh, Blue Ridge. They had seven guys standing behind the line of scrimmage, making the linemen for the Elks trying to figure out who do I block, who are they going to bring. But we figured it out. Riker into the end zone. Kevin Flores back for the kick. The Kevin ball is down. Kick. It looks good. Round Valley taking an early lead in this game. 7-0, 5-1 left to go in the first quarter. Well, that's what I like to see is them getting right on down the field. All righty. Let me get back on my horse here. Sorry, someone was asking me a question. Sorry. <laughs> We're all good. So five minutes and one second left here in this Treadmasters first quarter. Elks getting ready to kick the ball off. So before we get too far in this game, let's make a big shout out to the support that we're getting this evening. I know that we have Ethan's son, uh, I can't remember his first name, over Mr. Holiday on the sideline cam. Wes doing the announcing for us this evening. Brett Bigelow calling out information for the plays and Lisa tackling the stats for us. Flores kicks it off to the goal line. It's going to roll on in. Blue Ridge will get the ball on the 20. All right. Elks defense getting ready to go back to work. So here's the interesting conversation I had with one of the parents over in Blue Ridge last night talking about the numbers challenge that Blue Ridge faces. When you look at the roster. I was going to say it's looking a little light this year. It looks a little light, but they have, according to the roster, four freshmen and eight sophomores up on this team. They have a bright future going. It's impressive to see. We're gonna talk a little bit about the numbers challenges and how that balances out with Round Valley. Berlin is bringing the team right on into formation. They're set. Bring the 21 across formation in motion. Seth Slaughter, they're gonna hand it right up the middle. Uh, looks like 54, Trace and Merrill in on the initial hit, helped by at least two or three others. Hard to see everyone involved. That looked like number 10, Connor Luker getting up off the bottom of the pile there, coming in from a middle linebacker position. 
Jace Martin on the run for Blue Ridge. Looked like he picked up two. Blue Ridge is going to go into a bunch formation. Two off the left, two off the right. One running back. Berlin's going to roll to the left, throw it out. That was almost picked off by Merrill. <laughs> he had a heck of a shot at it, but he decides to bat it down. It's going to bring third and long for this Yellow Jacket offense. Third and at least eight, maybe nine. Looks like eight. I think Coach Hancock in the Blue Ridge coaching staff has been effective in finding ways to keep the pressure off Berlin. Not letting the young man take a lot of hits this year. I'm not saying he's never been hit, uh, never been sacked, but they find ways to utilize him, get the ball out of his hands quickly to kind of preserve him as the uh, as he grows and matures. Looks like All they're right. going to take a timeout as they're getting into formation. Timeout. So, White, first charge, timeout of the half. Can't so stop the clock. Speaking briefly about the numbers that I was talking about, when you look at the sidelines, we certainly have more players down there. Please set if the you game look clock at Ridge, to four uh, minutes, sideline. 18 but seconds. But what people don't really 18. realize is we essentially have our varsity and our JV team out there. Our JV team really is our freshman and JV team combined. There may be a few kids that are sick or that don't suit up, but in general, that's our whole football program. And when we go up against some of these bigger schools, it's a challenge because when they roll out a team, they're rolling out their varsity team. And when they have a sub, they got two or three guys that are available to be used. Blue Ridge this year, and maybe in recent years, I haven't followed them a lot. There's, as far as numbers, they're lower, lower on numbers, and so they're bringing up these younger classmen to, to play major roles in there. Round Valley is in a similar position. We're smaller, we don't have the numbers, so we bring up the JV team as support for varsity. I know, I'm seeing a fatter roster, but I only counted four more seniors for Round Valley over the Blue Ridge team, so still a fairly even mix of uh, Maturity, I guess you'd say, age. They, they got some experience there, and they got some good young kids. We're going to bring up a third and eight. We're back in this bump for, uh, bunch formation. Two off to the left, two off to the right, one running back. Berlin's going to roll. He's going to is a screen. They're going to throw it back over to Barton. He's got blockers in front of him. It looks like Kyle Clark was out there, and I also thought Trayson Merrill was off there. Yeah, and... Uh, I is like that Noah what Dana. Go ahead. I think that was number four, uh, Riley Harlan, kind of forcing him to cut back to the inside, back into his help. Excellent work there for that young man. Good team effort by the Elks so far in this kind of strange offense. So the Jackets are not going to go for it this time. They're going to, well, they're in punting formation, let's say. Indeed. Oh. Snap is back. The kick is off. Kyle Clark coming over. He's going to pick the ball up just past the 50, and he's going to pull back, cut the run back, cross, and he's going to get down to about the 17-yard line. There's a fumble. Or are they going to call that down? Yeah, However, I see a flag. There's way flag. back here at the 45. The location of that tells me it's going to be a block in the back. Yeah. I may be wrong. I mean, that's where I would expect to find one. That, and I also almost thought he, he signaled for the fair catch, but ran it anyways, so. Maybe that's what they're calling. I thought I did see a hand back there as well, and. Oh, no, yeah, that was definitely a, a blind side block. Um, caught number 12 of Blue Ridge as he was, yeah. So that's two, I two 15 yarders so far? Yeah. In the first quarter? I didn't see who was on that block but the return personal foul targeting illegal blindside block against the return team 77 it'll be 15 yards from the spot of the foul round valley will retain the ball it'll be first down so that's going to give us the ball way back well that's a shame that's going to negate a heck of a run around the 30-yard line of the Round Valley. We will get the ball. The Elks are already out in formation. Blue Ridge is still bringing man on. They're coming up. 
They're running a three-man front on us, three linebackers, which gives them an extra secondary player. Riker's back, gets a snap, he rolls off to the right, he's gonna throw a little bit behind Brett Jordan, and we have a flag on the play in the location of either holding or a late hit on the quarterback. I didn't see if he got hit or not. So we're gonna stack another one in here, it looks like. Holding penalty. Holding, offense number 55. 10 yard penalty, replay first down. Even though the holding penalty is a 10 yard penalty, it's a spot foul. So that was five yards deep at the 10, we're back 15. So we got a beautiful first and 25. Walker comes across more formation in motion. Riker's gonna keep the ball, come out here to the sideline. He's gonna bring up to about the 35 before he gets knocked out by Tricky, number eight. Okay, so that was a hit by number four, about two yards out of bounds. Ref neglecting to... Uh, ref's telling him, hey, if you don't get out of the way, I can't see it to call. Indeed. Elks come back, actually huddle up, break formation, coming up to the line. We got one split to the left, two to the right, tight end on the left. Clark in the backfield with Marble. Marble takes the snap, drops back to pass. He's going to throw a little. Will right down here to Kyle Clark, who's going to make the catch on about the 48 yard line before he gets hit, goes out of bounds, holds on to the holds on to the ball. All right, thanks for filling in. I'm sorry, I'm dealing with I got a, an issue with our sideline camera trying to get that figured out remotely. So thanks for picking up the slack, Scott. No I appreciate problem. it. No problem. I don't know how many irons I got in the fire, but it's probably at least two too many. Just watching, it's a lot. <laughs> I see your eyes glaze over when you look at all these buttons. Oh, yeah. It's easier to watch the football game. Elks back up to the line in formation. One running back, one split way to the right, two bunched over here on the end with the tight end. Marble's going to hand off the clock right up the middle for about five yards. Yeah, it looks like five to me. All righty. Well, so far, enjoying the energy from the Elks, not enjoying the penalties. All right, looks like Riker in the backfield, joined by Clark. We've got uh, Jordan and Elmer up top. Walker down on the bottom. They're in formation and they're changing the play, calling whatever the number is. Marble takes the snap, he drops back, he's getting pressure. He's gonna roll back against pressure. And he's gonna throw down the field to Brett Jordan and it gets tipped by, I believe, number 13. Tips the ball out of the way, it's a tough pass to make. He's rolling to his right, throwing back against his body. And it was close, just tipped right there at the end. It's going to bring up the second down and 10. Ball on the 46-yard line. Round Valley leads 2.13 to go in the first quarter, 7-0. All righty. Second and 10. Quick handoff right side to Clark. He missed, makes the first man miss, then hit hard right after, but still good for about two, two yards. 69, Aiden. Aiden 
Olgeen. Olgeen is what I'm hearing from the uh, Blue Ridge faithful over here to my left. I will take your word on that one. Because I, I thought it was Olguin, and they said, no, that's not right. That's silly. I'm like, oh, fair enough. So we got Baker in in the backfield, giving a breather to Clark. Elks back up to formation. One split to the bottom down here to the left. The other bunched on the right side. Marble's going to keep it. Oh, that's going to be dangerously close to a first down. Oh, that's good for six at least. Oh, nope. like then they're going to go ahead. Brody Ziegler came in right at the end and helped him out, gave a little pop to number eight. A little block right there at the end to help him out. Hey, I like it. So Elks still moving the ball well on the ground. Um, I think I missed one pass. How did that turn out? I'm not sure which pass you missed by now. Is that the one to Clark or was that the one before that? The one before that. I missed one to Clark because that was a big question I had was. There was one to Brett Jordan that was yeah, tipped I, by. That's the one I saw. It looked like it went wide, but it, I guess it was tipped. And hand off to Baker, and he's kind of going to get stacked up, and he's going to keep driving. Oh, that's that's one of those runs where uh, his aggressiveness and his, his toughness really show because he got two hard hits before he finally got brought down by the a mob of Yellow Jackets. That's one of those r runs where I start worrying about knees and ankles <laughs> getting rolled on on either side. Yeah, but at the same time, when you see, you know, someone on your team playing that hard, it just amps you up, you, you know. You appreciate You want to block harder. You want to throw harder. You want to run faster. So, yeah, it goes both ways. Absolutely. Walker comes across formation. They're going to hand it right up the middle again to Baker. He's going to pick up two more yards as we're going to wind down the first quarter. Wow, I cannot believe we've already burned through an entire quarter of football. So that's going to do it for the Treadmasters first quarter. We're getting set to get started with our Arizona Choice Insurance second quarter. Speaking of insurance, hey, you need uh, good insurance in Round Valley, go ahead and reach out to Mr. Troy Merrill. He does home, auto, life, all of your insurance, commercial. He does what you need right there next to shortstop. Go give Troy Merrill your business, our local farmer's agent here in Round Valley. I'm not sure that we're on track yet watching this game. No. I'm not sure that the players feel settled in. Um, we're making some progress, but I'm not sure we aren't, we're on track. I think some of the changes, whatever they saw on film, uh, Coach Hathcock has changed it up enough. They're giving us pressure on the run game. We've had a success here and there, but we're going to have to figure this out before we can really open this game up, which I really hope we do. Yeah, I, you know, I, I spoke a little in the pregame about uh, getting Riker real comfortable in the running game and really developing him as that dual run pass threat. And uh, when he has kept it, he has been very successful. I mean, our touchdown, and he's gotten some good yards. Let's see if we go back to the pass here. He's going to keep it, and he's going to be right there close to the first yet again. Now, we haven't talked about this yet, and it's kind of a shame. Number 32 on the blitz, linebacker for Blue Ridge, Franco Harris. I, I told them when I was going through a list of names, I'm like, seriously, Franco Harris? Franco Harris. Coolest name ever for a kid to play high school football with? I mean, come on. This guy's a uh, senior. But I've been hearing this name for years on Blue Ridge football. He's been a solid linebacker for Blue Ridge. He came right up the gut that time untouched. Oh, is that going to be a speeding ticket for the Yellow Jackets or the Elks? There were lots of movement there. I'm not quite sure who they're going to catch on it. The way the penalties are going for us, I would say...
snap, encroachment, defense. Five yard penalty will result in a first down. I take it back. Hey. Blue Ridge has a formation and a play. They did this to our JV three or four times last night. Drawn them off, off sides with a yard or so to go. Yeah, interesting, just seeing some little activity on the sidelines, I'm kind of keep track of. I don't know what's going on if we've got somebody well, causing a ruckus else. down by the elk sidelines, but the coaches yeah, keep pointing at the stands and asking for the AD. The All right. Marble fakes the handoff to Clark, tries to sneak in behind him. He's still going to manage to eke out about three yards out of that. Blue Ridge sussed it out early and uh, were there for the tackle, but still gaining three hard yards. Mr. Marble and on those, the keeper. Those are hard yards. Blue Ridge is making a tough front formation for us. They're, they're shifting around those linebackers, bringing them in different gaps. Our linemen are having a hard time figuring out the blocking. So we're struggling for the yards we're getting. Indeed. This is exactly what I was hoping for is Riker to roll out. Excellent catch. Oh, Elmer, that's going to be good for the touchdown. I was just going to say this would be a great time to go to the air. Riker rolls out to the right, finds 24 out there by himself, and gets a perfect ball delivered to him. Nice move and right into the end zone best part about that that looks like that was his second option I think he was looking yep. at Jordan first pulled off of that Elmer is wide open that's progression of your quarterback right there that's that's fun to see all righty and after the instant replay Mr. Flores went ahead and got the extra point through the uprights it's 14 to nothing with 11 minutes left here in this Arizona Choice Insurance second quarter. Elks off to a great start, up two scores. I like to see him keep the momentum. Oh, listen to that pet band. Getting that fight song going. We're getting the clapping, the chanting. We are excited tonight. Crowd doing their part so far. Final game of the regular season for football. A few of our other sports have wound up. Soccer's done. Volleyball, I believe, plays in here tomorrow. And it's a playoff St. game, John. right? And it is a playoff game against St. John's. And then I believe that's for region championship implications in that game. Come out and support your Lady Elks in their volleyball game. Wrestling, if I read the announcements right, Boys and girls wrestling starts on Monday. Oh Coach, my goodness, Coach it's Salazar happening. and Coach Finch ready. Flores is teed up, we're ready to go. Kickoff, kick it looks like it will sail into the end zone. Yeah, that was a strong kick. It would be fantastic if we have an opportunity to see Mr. Flores make an attempt for the school record. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about trying to get him a 53-yarder. Coach thinks he's got the leg for it. So if, if he finds us in the, the right opportunity. And the name I saw wasn't making sense to me. Was it uh, Henry? What was that name that I was seeing that had that? Uh Jace Barton, number two, up the middle, is going to gain about nine yards. I thought it was Communia as it had our record, but the name that I saw earlier was the foreign exchange student we had several years ago, Henry. But either way, 53 yarders is what we're looking for this evening if we have an opportunity. Jackets back on the line right away. They're going to bring a bunch of formation to the left, one running back with and her handoff straight up the middle. Chase Barton, not enough to get to the first. No, oh, they're going to give it to him. Yeah, gonna I guess give him the first down. Forward progress. That was 77 grabbing a handful of jersey and slinging him around. Chase Barton, when you're on the field, he's not the biggest guy that the Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets have, but he runs hard. 
formation again. They're going to throw the ball out here to number five, Antonelli. Right on the tackle is going to be number 12. Teddy Ziegler getting help in there from Gage Baker and Ellen Walker. Yeah, well executed, but Round Valley right there for the tackle. You can see from their play calling how quick hitting these things are that they are not wanting to get hits on that quarterback. Yeah. The ball is out of his hands before our linemen have a chance to get past the offensive line. Berlin's going to roll out to the right. He's going to throw the ball. That is up for That's intercepted by Riker Marble out coming up and jumping that route. Out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Just on the out, just past the outstretched hands of his receiver, and Riker comes up with the interception. We got to see that one again here for our White Mountain Regional Medical Center. Rinsed and replay. Oh, hawk that ball. And right on out of bounds. Excellent play, Mr. Marble. And that would be the 42-yard line, the other 47. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the correction. Oh, that's what I'm here for. If nothing else, I right? I thought it was just to push all those buttons. Well, am I, pu am I pushing yours yet? No. <laughs> Elks back up to the lines. Two split right, one split to the left, one running back. Marble's going to take the handoff. He's going to hand it off to Gage Baker. Off to the right side. He's going to stretch it to the right. Yeah, excellent to get about two more yards at the end of that when it looked like he was done. Is that five? They're going to give him six yards on that. Good hard run there. Hard for those receivers to sustain their blocks, but they did a great job. Pickup yeah. of six yards. Man. Gage has been showing us a lot of great effort tonight. I think he's missed being in the lineup the last couple weeks. I think so, too, and it's showing. Anyways, he's back there in the backfield with uh, Riker. Fake the handoff. Ball's in the air. Brett snags that thing out of the air. How did he catch that? Who is that that came over to try to snag that that is mysterious number 13 for Blue Ridge just over his fingertips Jordan That's grabs 27 the snag. yards and we're going to be down to about the eight yard line my goodness marble to Jordan on that reception 831 to go in the second quarter Elks are up 14 to zero and in the red zone yet again looking to go up three scores here Riker joined by Clark in the backfield. Clark right up the middle, pulls the, excuse me, back up step and on in for the touchdown. Great hard run up the middle. Clark, that's the momentum I like to see. And now already Elks on the board, 20 to zero over the Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets. <laughs> Snap is up, Flores puts the boot into it, and it looks like it's good. Round Valley finding the groove early here in the second quarter, jumping up 21 to nothing on Blue Ridge. It looks like a few things have switched for them. They've found a few things that are working, how to stretch that defense out, and obviously Marble coming up with the interception. Huge for Round Valley on that drive. Yeah, I'm liking what I'm seeing, Scott. Good energy, good plays. You know what else I like? Beehive Homes of Eager. Hey, if your loved one needs some care, take them down to the Beehive Home. They treat them like family. They're good people. Home-cooked meals, and they care for them like they're their own family members. Beehive Homes. Proud sponsor, Let's Go Elks. Happy to have them on here. I know uh, Wes would like me to mention that they help take care of his Aunt Gwen. Elks back on the field, getting ready to kick off. Blue Ridge set to receive. Most of the games in the region are winding up on this evening, but Cholo finished their season last night against Page.
take the region championship over in Sholo for the Cougars. Flora is set to kick off. Puts a boot into it. Antonelli will pick it up around the four. Straight up the middle. And he's going to bust away. Oh, my goodness. Let's see if anyone has an opportunity to catch him. And Antonelli is going to take that back for a 95-yard touchdown. Coaches are going to appreciate the effort by the Elks, but they're not going to appreciate that coverage. Yeah, when I saw... <laughs> When I saw Flores crash in hard, I thought, oh, he's got this. And then he he crashed in too hard and got all the way across the runner and into the guy behind him. Oh, well. Maybe next time. Well, that'll put the Yellow Jackets on the board and essentially get them right back into this game. Only down two scores. Seven minutes, 52 seconds left to play here. Number 18, Reed Graniel. Back to kick for Blue Ridge. That, that either got blocked. That must have been a bad hold because it, it looked like when it left its foot, it was already struggling to gain altitude. Jake Aspar's on the hold for that one. So we will take a 21 to 6 lead. Well, that didn't last long. No. on that formation. Speaking of adjustments. Yeah, Winslow McNeil. Hey, if you need an adjustment in the Round Valley area, go see our buddy Winslow down at White Mountain Chiropractic. Hey, he'll take good care of you. That's 333-2224. They have gift cards. You can gift somebody massages and chiropractic care. Awesome, perfect gift coming up for the holiday season for that tough to find present. I'm just saying, if I'm on your list, sounds good to me. I will make sure that your Santa knows that that sounds good to you. Hopefully my Santa's listening tonight. Santa's always listening. Looks like Blue Ridge is having a few issues getting the personnel lined out on their kickoff. Number 41, Jake Esparza, he's a senior. Out there getting things lined up. He must be the count guy. Letting Coach know when we have enough or when we don't. Just keep sending him out, Coach. We need some more. Renillo on the kickoff is going to be fielded by Walker around the 10-yard line. Ooh, number brought 20. down hard from behind. Number 20, Samuel James, a sophomore for Blue Ridge. Slicing in there, tackling Walker. Nice coverage, getting him at the 20 for Blue Ridge. All right, and just like that, Elks are back on offense. Oh, what do we got? Looks like, was that Clark I saw trotting out? Did he join the huddle? Well, I see the pink flag. I think it is out. That is. Yep. So Clark's going to be in the backfield with Riker. Dallin's going to be up top. We've got uh, Jordan and Elmer down at the bottom. Eventually, Round Valley is going to challenge the safety with the tight end right up the seam, but that may not happen right now. Wow. Excellent job by Riker to just get back to the line of scrimmage. That was a long run. That was a lot of running for, well, they're going to give him about six inches, half a yard. I'm not sure what happened. We had a tight end coming this way to block, a lineman going that way to block. Yeah, so looks like the linebacker read it perfectly, got up around the end that was being blocked. We had the end covered, but the linebacker able to get up and around, force Gage to go deep to get around him, and then by that point, Safety help got him back at the line of scrimmage. Blue Ridge changing up a little bit with a four-man front on their defense right now. They're going to hand the ball off to Ziegler coming this way. He's going to lower his head and 
dive over the 25. That's going to be good for seven. Eight. Eight yards. No, seven. I know how to count. Yeah, it looks like he had uh, number five, Mr. Baker, in there as a lead blocker on that one. I'll go ahead and show it to you again. Third down and three. <laughs> you got Gage joined in the back. Sorry. Riker joined by Gage. I'll get it right. Riker's going to keep it. He's off the right side. That's going to be good for the first. That's good for one, two, three, four, five yards for Mr. Marble. Have to tip your hat to some of these underclassmen for Blue Ridge coming up and making plays. That's tough to do on a varsity level. It looks like they've adjusted well through this season. Marble gets the first down, but Tricky is there to make sure that he doesn't get much more. Yeah, they brought a lot of pressure off the left. Luckily, we're running it to the right. It almost looks like they were anticipating the count, and Marble caught them, and yep. they were able to hold up, but they're starting to listen to it and bring that pressure on and off. And another flag. I think they're all calling the same thing. Well, they're all about the same area. Maybe the second flag was just a more accurate marker of where it happened. Holding, offense number 12, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. Well, there's another Elks penalty, a holding call, good for 10 yards. Luckily, it was right at the yard of line of scrimmage, the yard of scrimmage. Oh, words. Very good. A uh, yard behind, so it's going to be uh, first and 21. Marble back to pass. Oh, man, he had, is that Harlan. Harlan, number four, up the right side, just barely overthrew him by about a half a yard, trying to catch him in stride. But he had space. Looks like the players out there are still feeling pretty good about things. There's a little talking going back and forth. Indeed. I was hoping to see the ball pass a little more, and I'm getting it. Now, if we could just get a few more completions, I would be happy. All right, empty backfield for Riker. Do you think he's going to go ahead and throw it, or is this going to be a delayed draw? Second nope. down. Franco Harris coming in on the tackle. Ball came out, he recovered it. Flag down, was that a late hit? I'm not sure what that was for. You got a replay on that? Yeah, 32 pushed Trayson in the back and then fell on the down man, so. Possibly a late hit. I'm not sure. I don't really know what they're thinking. The Jackets are bringing pressure intermittently, on, and we're not picking it up. They're they're timing it well. Coach Hathcock, oh, that's his name. He got a running start and hit Tracing in the back. Oh. Number 32 did. I don't know if he was hoping it was a block or what, but uh, I think that's what the refs are talking about. This might be a little more serious as I go back and look at the replay. Well, they're still handing off fives out there, so. Yeah. Ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the offense. There is no foul on the play. Okay. Did they think he tried to throw it maybe? I don't know. Interesting. He hit the ground, then the ball came out. So the ground shouldn't force a fumble, right? I have no idea. In high school, it's whether the ref thinks it is. It 
So Blueridge is able to bring pressure against this, and we're not quite picking it up yet. Uh, Coach Hathcock is bringing these linebackers. That's his native position when he played in high school. He's a fantastic linebacker. He coaches it well, and these uh, linebackers are playing it well for him. Four-man front for Blue Ridge as we go split all out. Riker, lone man in the backfield. Going to roll out. Looks like he's going to throw the ball. We're going to get another hold. I think it's going to be 54 downfield. I don't think he was deeper than. Where they give you two yards, three yards? I can't remember what it is. But I see him Holding talking. Holding offense, number 12. Penalty is declined. Four. Result of the play is fourth down. We're going to have okay. a fourth and 12. Round Valley will bring on for the first time tonight. They're punting 424 left to go in the second quarter. Round Valley up 21 to 6. Number 13 back to receive for Blue Ridge. And I don't know if that's Rosales. Emmanuel Rosales, I'm not sure who that is. He's not on the roster. Blue Ridge looks like they're gonna bring pressure off the left side. Riker has the ball, he kicks it, and that's a low liner. It's gonna get a nice bounce. Oh, it off. touched him, it's live. It's off, yep. Oh, oh. Fantastic. Oh. He lost it and scooped it up mid. Number eight, Kenley Caldwell, hustling back to make the tackle. Gonna drive them all the way back inside the 15. Well, that was exciting. What a way to flip the field. Indeed. Speaking of excitement, it's firewood season. If you need chainsaws, steel chainsaws, parts for your chainsaws, chains, bars, any of that jazz, or feed for your animals, go see our friends down at Cowboy Up Midtown Springerville. They got the deals for you. They even fix small engines. Go give Jeff a hard time down at Cowboy Up. Lurridge back out on the ball. They bring come up to the line in formation. Berlin brings a man in motion. They're going to hand the ball to number 13. He's going to get stacked up. I see Keanu Clark That's, in yeah, on the tackle. Looked like Keanu might have had some help from Mondo. Blue Ridge is going to stay on the ball, calling their play. Going to bring one out wide to the left, one to the right, one running back. Double tight. Going to bring man in formation across. Had the ball to Jace Barton, and he dropped it, so he fell to his knees to cover. Try to do that fake pitch, quick spin around handoff. And that ball hits the deck, not able to get that off cleanly. Brody Ziegler there to tag him down. It's going to bring up a third down and 14. Again, the Jackets on the line. I've watched them twice this year. I don't remember them going from formation in those other games. I don't know if that's just an adjustment for tonight. Berlin back. Ready for the snap, gets the ball, he's gonna roll off. To the left, throw the ball out here. And it is tapped by, or tipped by Trace and Merrill, number 54. One of these times he's gonna get that and run it in for a touchdown. Uh, it can only hit your hands so many times but when you're bound to catch it, right? Last week he had a couple of opportunities and he was a little frustrated because the, the ball just didn't bounce in his direction. I swear, it seems like every score. every week he gets out in the flat and some quarterback's like, oh, I'll just throw it over the top of him. And they don't realize he's, what, eight, nine feet tall? When he jumps, <laughs> that's a that's a tall order. Indeed. Round Valley has their kick return team out. Everyone is standing, nobody. And so the punter is in the end zone. You're going to get the ball off clean. Kick it out to about the 35. I think that's going to be a block in the back there. Yeah, it looks like it. Speaking maybe. of penalties, we have to be pushing 120 plus yards in penalties in this first half. Give me a second and I'll check. I was just wanting to look at that replay. Oh, close to getting it blocked. During the return. Oh, yep. 
Illegal block in the back against the return team. 10 yard penalty, first down. Yeah, so there was two blocks in the back, one by us and one immediately after by the Yellow Jackets. And uh, we got called for ours. So we are at 60 yards for to five by, by the last count of our statistician, of which we appreciate her work. This is a tough job to do to keep track. Riker back in formation is going to fake the handoff up the middle and roll out. Dragon, dragon. Refusing to go down. Jake Esparza holding on and going for the ride. That's good for a solid 10 yards out of the gate. Two and a half minutes left in this Arizona Choice Insurance second quarter. Elks up 21 to six over your yellow, Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets. Looking to push hard to get up three scores before the half, of which they will be receiving the ball to start the second half tonight. Look for Round Valley to take a shot down the field here. Yeah, they're playing awfully soft on number 24. And it's to him. And he's got it. Oh, my goodness. What did I tell you? They were playing him way too soft. Oh, there's all sorts of flags. Is that a celebration issue down there? It must have been. Marble to Elmer. 34-yard touchdown. There you go. Yep, nice, easy on in. So I didn't see any contact at all during the play, so let's see what the call is. Judging by how things are going tonight, it's definitely going to be against the us. Touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, 24 offense. That penalty will be enforced on the ensuing kickoff. Right. And again. And the, the Boo Birds are showing up. <laughs> Kick is up and good once again. Kevin Flores. So the potential here at this formation, we're close to halftime. This game could get chippy here pretty quick if uh, cooler, he cooler heads do not prevail. These uh, Jackets are pride. They have a lot of pride, tradition in that program. Round Valley's uh, kind of putting it to them. You can see things either spiral out, spiral out of control, get a little chippy in the second half. Maybe the coach will kind of calm them down. We have a lot of penalties going on here in the first half. So whatever you were hoping, Maybe next game. Yeah, we're already up to at least 70. 60 was the last count. We just tacked on another 15. So that's at least 75 yards so far for the Oaks. I mean, the good news is we're still up three scores. Bad news is still catching the penalties. Man, that was a... Going to be kicking off from the 25. It's Kevin Flores. Blue Ridge looking to get some good field position. Just under two minutes left on the clock. So if you kick the ball out of bounds, do they get it on the 35? I would think so. That might be worth your effort right there. Ball picked up around the 16. Antonelli running it out. Just short of the 40. I notice a lot of Elks staying in their lanes on that that kickoff return. I'm sure they, they were, were uh, probably coached up after the last one. I think on that last kickoff, there was quite a few substitutions uh, for the kickoff team, and so it looks like they reverted back to maybe their original formation. Looks like number seven, Oscar Seth, with that tackle on that kickoff. Oscar, a foreign exchange student, getting the opportunity to play the game of football. Growing up most of his life playing soccer or football over there. Um, the other football. <laughs> electing to play American football here 
has had a great time. It's been fun to get to know that young man. He is in covering the center. Your down lineman. Berlin's got the ball back. He's going to throw it out to Antonelli. With the hit out there by Harlan, that's going to be about a one-yard gain. Yep, got the ball out quick, but again, for short yardage, that ain't going to get you down the field. And so we're going to see this young man over the next couple years, and as the years progress, we're not going to see this quick out of the hand stuff. He's going to be given more time. I know he will by his coach, but we haven't got a hand on him all night. I mean, he's tall enough. If he can just put on a few more bounds. Oh, he will. You're not going to worry about him back there. And we're not even seeing him run, and I know he can. Berlin drops back. He's going to throw the ball. Almost picked Ooh. off by Connor Luger reaching up. Man, he's really stepped up big for the Elks tonight, hasn't he? You know, we've had uh, – Connor's had to come in ever since the Winslow game. Had some injuries, illnesses going on on the linebacker core. And Connor got called to come up, and he has a nose for being on the play. He's not a big kid if you talk to him. Not real tall, doesn't have a lot of weight, but he has good instincts, and he will not – back away from putting his nose in there and making the tackle. Oh, one of my favorite little wrestlers to coach. He's always a good time. Oh, he has a fantastic personality. He'll keep you rolling. <laughs> yes, he does. Luridge has three split down here to the bottom, one to the top, one running back. Berlin, as we have 143 left to go here in the second quarter, takes the snap. They're going to throw it out here, number 41 again on a wide receiver. Oh, ball's on the ground. Wide receiver Ooh. screen. That Connor Luker again on the tackle. Just All right, recovered by Round Valley. Round Valley, or er, timeout Round Valley immediately Blurge, after. Blurge has run that wide receiver screen a couple times. The Elks have been effective in, uh, in stopping it. So they're going to talk about uh, going for it on fourth down. A minute yep. 32 to go in the half. What do you think? Yeah, I'm sure. What would you do? Kick it or keep it? I don't know. It doesn't take the Elks long to score. I would say Elks are going to get it right back coming out of the half. That's a tough call, but uh, you haven't been able to reliably get seven yards tonight. You've had a couple positive plays for more than that, but not enough to make me feel like we got this in the bag. And I know you're saying we haven't got hands on him, but if he doesn't get it out quick, there's going to be. Because on two plays in a row, right behind him, he's hearing the footsteps. We got pressure getting to him. He's just getting the ball out real quick. Well, they so come. if you if you need that receiver to get a few more yards down the field, you're going to have to risk. And, and it looks like they're going to go ahead and line up. Yeah, they're coming out in a punt formation. Would expect him to punt it away. Wouldn't be surprised if they... Uh, kind of fake punt. Slaughter back to receive the snap on this punt. Round Number Valley 21. with 10 men on the He's field. He's looking. He's looking right there. Fantastic hit by Brett Jordan on number two. That's going to be Jace Barton. Yeah, Lighting it up, starting it up. Now, if I was Coach Brad Baca, go for a touchdown right now. Indeed. Just go ahead and put the nail in the coffin. Going to get the ball back to start the next half. Yes, sir. Now, we haven't talked about this yet. Mr. Slaughter, his dad went to Round Valley. I really? Believe his, I believe his dad is, um, well, I won't say, but obviously Mr. Slaughter. Or if they call him on the football team, Sergeant Slaughter. Okay, I like it. Now, unfortunately, I mean, that play was open, but floated that pass. Floated the pass. I mean, if he gets it there quicker, it, he had the opportunity to catch it. He was being played soft. But uh, him floating that ball is what led to that big hit on his receiver. So. See, if we can't get uh, Jordan right up the seam over the top of the safety on this pretty quick here. Nope, they're going to throw it to the outside for. Oh, off the face mask. Uh, Dallin's hoping he had that one back. He's saying, that's my fault, Riker. Give me, give me <laughs> another chance. Yep. That's good. we got a minute 26 as we wind down toward halftime. Round Valley is up 28-6. to six. Just got the ball back after a failed fourth down conversion by Blue Ridge. Round Valley's calling the plays at the line. Formation is set. 
Nobody in the backfield with Marble. Give it to Clark in motion. He comes across. He gets kind of caught up in the middle. He's going to get three yards. That's what the spot's looking like to me. He fights for that, Two yards. He? Okay. He fights for that. He's going to come off. They're going to send Baker on in his spot. He took a few hits uh, trying to get the extra yards on that play. Helps yes, up to the line. He did. Oh, in the hand. That's I'm not sure. Do we have that on replay? Yeah, he uh, he was being played tight, but uh, still had a shot at the ball, kind of back shoulder. Don't think that you have to turn around as the defender. So not in high school. Don't get that. Well, yeah, at least not anymore in high school. Not going to get that play, but I like the call there. Fourth down. 50 seconds left to go in the half. Elks are going to call a timeout. This sh is this our last? No, we got one more. Should now, we need it? Round Valley, second of the half. Yep, second of the half. Well, let's talk about a sponsor, Altitude Hyperbaric Chamber. Hey, if you want to get high on life or just feel better, recover from an injury or surgery, go visit Altitude Life uh, Hyperbaric Chamber. They do one-hour sessions, pure oxygen, below sea level pressure, good for the immune system too, a plethora of health issues. Go give them a, go give them a shot, altitude.life for altitude hyperbaric chamber therapy, I'm assuming is what you would call it. Yep, there it is on the ad roll. Thank goodness. Looking around the area this evening, looks like St. John's already has a score posted for a win. I don't know. They say the game was the 28th, but how is that thing over? Uh, Holbrook looking at 9-0. and zero. So far, you're looking to finish up their season strong. I think they are ranked number five in the two-way. St. John's currently at 14. Elks back up to the line. I've heard that uh, Holbrook team is pretty good this year. Get out of bounds. Nice pick up to about the 27-yard line. Holbrook. 14 yards, 13. He stepped it back a yard. Holbrook does have a good team this year. They've had a great turnout. They've played well. I know that program in football, at least, has struggled for years. Their basketball program, both boys and girls, is outstanding. Marble's going to roll off to the left. All the time in the world. Now he's got a little pressure. Oh, ho, ho. Slaughter comes up with the interception, it looks like. Oh, oh. that's going to be a second one for Jordan. I'm just assuming that's on us. us. It may not be. I would, too, because that's just the way things are going tonight. See as they talk about it. Ruling on the field is an interception. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 24, Round Valley. That is number 24, second unsportsmanlike foul. 24 has been ejected. Oh, they are taking him out of the game. Two unsportsmanlikes. I've never heard of that. And I don't know the implications of that, but that may affect us next week. Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, an interesting call. Because when you get ejected from a game, I believe the next game you're sitting out. Well, Blue Ridge not content to take a knee to wind out the clock. They're up in formation, two split to the left. Berlin in the backfield, bring a man in motion. Slaughter going to give the handoff up the middle to Barton. He's going to gain about eight yards. He's twisting and turning in there. 
Yeah, you can't get on your knees, turn, and dive for a few more. <laughs> Got to appreciate the effort there. Ooh. Got to yell jacket slow to get up. That's number 17. That's not good. Sitting with about 20 seconds left to go. Other games going on this evening. There's a fantastic game down in, I believe it's in Marinci. You got number one Marinci taking on number two, the Pima Rough Riders. And what would really be the, uh, who's going to get the first seeding, first ranking in the unit, or in uh, 2A division going into the playoffs. Marinci currently 9-0, and Pima 8-1. and That game taking place in Marinci this evening. There's a few other games going on in the 3A that have some relevance. Sabino taking on Benson. Benson being led by Coach Clough, who was here last year. That will have ranking implications. Sabino currently ranked at eight, right behind us, but not by far. Blurge back in formation. Second Berlin's going to take a snap and lose it, but I think he jumps back on the ball. Well, that was exciting. <laughs> I think they are now going to be content to let the clock run and head to the locker room for halftime. We have senior night for the Round Valley Elks for the seniors coming up this halftime. Join with us in that celebration and honoring the seniors this year. How many did you say we had? Did you look at that roster earlier? Uh, right around 10, maybe 11. We've got some band members, I'm sure some cheerleaders, some dance, dance team members. We're going to have the uh, extra time in the half. We're going to have the 20 minute half. Well, thoughts on the first half? Um, I mean, <laughs> the elephant in the room is the ejection, right? And the, and wondering what's going on with that. And it's baby sister, the penalties. We have just been, we've got a lot of 15 yard penalties this yeah. evening. Uh, uh, not quite cleaned up. So 13, we've been calling his number tonight for the Yellow Jackets. That's Matthew, looks like Symington. Number 13. And then at 68, and we have Ethan Cavey. Give me that second number. 68. Ethan. Ethan Covey? Cavey? It looks like an A. C A V E Y. So there we go, updated our rosters. Thank you. 
Javier Flores. He plans to get a degree in architectural engineering and start his own construction company. His favorite memory is his first season kicking and having a great time with his teammates and the coaches and spending time with his friends and eating enchiladas with Brian Bell. Ladies and gentlemen, Colin Flores. Number 21, Joel Hernandez. Being escorted by Cheryl and Carlos Martinez. Plans after high school include making my own construction company. Hey, you and Kevin might want to get connected there. And his favorite memories for football are all of them. And his high school and his freshman year. Ladies and gentlemen, number 21, Joel Hernandez. <laughs> I don't think he was enjoying getting his picture taken. Number 24, Jordan Elmer. Being escorted by mom and dad, Curtis and Emily Elmer. Plans after high school is to buy a VW bus and work remotely and travel the United States. His favorite memory are playing with Rowdy and Stockton. And his favorite high school memory is all his choir memories. Ladies and gentlemen, number 24, Jordan Elmer. Number 50, Armando Garcia. Being escorted by Juanita Garcia. Plans after high school are to travel the world and accomplish everything y'all said I couldn't do. My favorite memories were the upperclassmen hang up on me at practice. I miss when everything was so simple, but that's part of growing up. Seeing the truth is difficult when you think right. Ladies and gentlemen, Armando Garcia. Number 52, Russian Slade. Escorted by Erica and Brandon Slade, plans after high school to pursue mechanics and eventually become a diesel mechanic. His favorite memory is being on the sidelines supporting all of my childhood friends, those Friday night games. Ladies and gentlemen, number 52, Russian Slade. Number 54, Trayson Merrill. He is escorted by Troy and Jamie Merrill. After high school, Trayson wants to become an insurance agent. His favorite memory was winning state. Ladies and gentlemen, number 54, Trayson Merrill. Number 77. <laughs> Didn't get the picture. Hang on. Number 77, Keanu Clark. Being escorted by Albert and Stephanie Clark, Keanu plans on serving a mission for my church and then pursuing an education. His favorite memories are, of course, winning the state title freshman year by being able to play with my brother. Ladies and gentlemen, number 77, Keanu Clark. Number 80, Brian Acosta. Being escorted by Maria Gonzalez and Manuel Guerrero. Plans on after high school is to open his own mechanic shop. And his favorite memories is when he got that touchdown versus Paige. My favorite memories of high school are when Mr. Pena would send me out of class my junior year. Ladies and gentlemen, number 80, Brian Acosta. That's the football seniors. Let's celebrate our cheerleaders now. Help me welcome Electra Childs. Escorted by Gilbert Childs and Dental and Joe. After high school, I want to go into law and become a lawyer. I'd like to thank my parents and family. A big thanks to Stephanie for being the best and most supportive coach I've ever had. 
and for my boyfriend for also being very supportive and motivating me to work harder. My favorite memory would definitely be staying last year, celebrating my best friend's birthday, and having the most fun. If you know, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, Electric Childs. celebrate playing the clarinet for us, Abby Ramsey. The escorted by Mia and Wyatt Ramsey. Our favorite memory of the pet band is the saga of my rebellion against the monarchy. The pet band game where the only song we played was the fight song. And if you know, you know. Any words of encouragement being there seems to have been a struggle, but it was all worth it and I will do it all again. Ladies and gentlemen, Abby Ramsey. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, for all of your senior high school football, cheer and dance, and pet band.
I think we survived the halftime. Quite a handful of uh, football players and cheerleaders. Indeed. Now we'll be treated by the cheer squad and the dance team. We're going to go ahead and talk over the music like we usually do. I apologize for that in Ladies advance. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your varsity seniors on the field. One more time. So looking at some of our shortstop stats for tonight, the Elks rushing effectively 128 yards on the ground, averaging about five yards a carry. Passing yards, 92 yards, averaging about eight yards a pass. Nothing wrong with either one of those options. Indeed. Uh, defense, you know, I think Brown Valley and Blue Ridge both doing well tonight, uh, each with a, an interception. We had Riker getting one for us, and we had uh, Slaughter, Slaughter for Blue Ridge. We put the ball on the deck once, recovered our own fun ball, and Blue Ridge putting the ball on the deck at least three times, but always be somehow managing to, to get back on top of it. So if there's some uh, opportunity there, it seems like the uh, ball hits the ground a lot for these Yellow Jackets. Well. It's interesting to watch. They certainly had our, they had a scheme that we struggled with early coming out. Uh, I don't remember what the end of the score uh, in the first quarter was, but we were struggling getting going. In the second quarter, we uh, were able to pick up a few scores, and that turnover was big in adding to the lead that we had. Uh, but it looked like we just had to figure that out. Coach Hancock, or Hancock has the defense kind of um, keeping us on our toes. We're not able to roll over them. You know, we've had a three or four games here about some teams that we've actually been able to, to do very well with, and he has a stingy defense that has made it tough on us. They haven't moved the ball extremely well. We've held them well on our defense, but they've also given us some problems. Yeah, I mean, Yellow Jackets down 22 at this point, but still don't feel like they're out of this. You know, and I know uh, Round Valley is going to get the ball to start the second half. I still feel like uh, they're playing hard. It'll be interesting to see what kind of adjustments each side makes and what happens in this second half. Well, hopefully on our side, there's an opportunity there that they would talk about the penalties that we're getting. The excessive amount of penalties, personal fouls, the 15 yards that are just, that's hard on your offense and your defense when you're giving up that many penalties. Hopefully that is one area that they clean up. It's been a struggle. Um, this second half has the opportunity, to, like I said before, to get a little bit chippy, and I hope it does not. But we don't need any more players that are ineligible to play next week. We need the bodies on the field. We need them playing. So hopefully cooler heads will prevail in the second half. Um, and I'm looking forward to the opportunity. Indeed. Janelle, Ech Janelle Pena echoing that sentiment. Let's cut down on the penalties, she says. Um, they're just killing us tonight. They are killing um, us. Good to hear from Janelle. Yeah, it's always... Sorry. Squirrel. And we've got the ground crew heading out across the field again, taking the camera, getting set up. Got about three minutes left on the clock before the teams come out. They'll give them a little extra time once they hit the field. Our halftime was a little bit longer tonight because it's senior night. Senior night. We are through another season of football. Oh, we've done it. And it looks like playoffs are in our future. If we're able to seal this one, we're in a good spot for our first round playoff game. And actually in a decent spot and a shot for a second round playoff game. I'm not sure how much you and Wes covered already. I know you talked about where, where we're set and all that. Yeah, but Valley, made a big jump. Valley Christian beat Fountain Hills already. I think they played last night. So we are behind Valley Christian by, according to the rating that they use to calculate the position, we're behind them by like 
7.3, but the rating that Blue Ridge has is higher than the rating that Fountain Hills has. So it'll be interesting to see if the Elks hold on to win, if we are able to jump up above Valley Christian, even though both teams won. I don't know that that will happen, but it'll be interesting to see if that does happen. Sabino is right on our heels. Uh, we got a rating of 11.5078. They're at 11.4004, so they're right there as well. Sabino plays this evening, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, Benson. Benson is probably a little bit higher up on the, the right. rating as well. So it'll be interesting to see. We jumped up from nine to seven with a loss to Sabino to Thatcher. That helped us out getting into the top eight. Benson rolling in at 14. Blue Ridge tonight is ranked number four. And looks like Monument Valley is rounding out the top 16. So actually from our region, currently teams that are in the top 16, we've got Monument Valley, we got Blue Ridge, we got Round Valley, and of course we've got the Sholo Cougars. All of those teams in the top 16 potentially making the playoffs. All right, hurry, 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 on the line, everybody. Guys, we got like 30 seconds. Okay, here's what you got to oh. do, lock arms. Like you I, see I so missed kids, lock arms. something going on you on the field. They other. got the kids lined up again for some down. sort of a race. I don't know if they have He's shoes set. on, shoes yeah. off, chasing candy bars, but they are off. Oh, it's a locked arm race. Oh, there's won't supposed to look other buddies. That makes it tough when you turn and run into the people behind you. There we go. I'm glad you knew what was going on because I, I was trying to figure it out. Well, just about a t out of time here on the Swear Advanced Automotive Halftime Show. It's not much of a show. Senior night tonight. Lots of big smiles on those faces, and we appreciated watching each and every one of them do their thing this year. Thank you to the seniors. We wish you well in your future endeavors. I know that you still have a better part of the school season left to finish up, but the times that we have to watch you on the football field are limited. Thank you for your time wearing the Round Valley Elk uniform. Pablo's down on the field, dancing around, chopping. He's ready to play second half. Hopefully he can get the team riled up, wound up. We can get this opening kickoff and put us in a good position as we move forward in the second half. Now, do you feel like uh, the crowd's eagerness to uh, discuss some of these penalties with the refs has uh, led to an increase in the, the frequency of these penalties? Do you think that's played into it at all? I don't know. Are you talking about here specifically or just in general? Uh, this game specifically. So I've noticed there's been a rather, it is senior night, so the, the stands are absolutely packed. And it seems like there's been a lot of, we've had the Boo Birds out a few times already on some penalties. And the home, home crowd not too happy with the way this has been officiated thus far. So two years ago, we go over to Blue Ridge and it is cold and it might've been the last game of the season. It is cold and it is wet and we were ranked higher uh, and it kind of expected to win that game and the Yellow Jackets showed up and took that win from us, kind of rubbed our noses in that. And I think that even though we did not have an opportunity to play Blue Ridge last year, due to some COVID restrictions and cancellation stuff. Uh, the boys that played remember that. And I think there's some, I just think there's some hostility out there. They're wanting to
Round Valley looks like they are anticipating the potential onside kick, so they have their hand team in there. One man deep, that would be Dallin Walker. And they pooch kick it down to about the 25. It's gonna bounce and Walker's gonna take it. And he's got a gap. If he can get past this guy, he's gonna get thrown down about the 47 yard line of Blue Ridge. We have another flag. That's I am potential area blocking the back. Well, we, during the return, during the return, illegal block in the back, return team, 10 yard penalty, first down. So, picking up in the second half where we left off in the first, picking up some of those tough penalties. Even the penalty was a block in the back. That's gonna cost us. Yeah, that negates excellent field position. We had it all the way across the 50. Now we're gonna get it about the 25. That's a 30 plus yard actual penalty effect on that, even though it's 10 yard from the spot of the foul. Elks will come out in formation. All right, Riker joining the backfield by Clark, sending Walker in motion. Fakes the handoff to Walker. He's going to take it off the right side. Uh, looks like he got what? Back to line of scrimmage? Well, that'll be no gain on the play. Jackets came up and pressed that. They saw the runner go in motion. And at, uh, see, 41, Jacob Sparza came in and pressed that. Gave Ziegler a hard time on that block, and he did not give the quarter or the corner to Riker. Riker kind of had to cut it up in there, and there was nowhere to run. All right, bunched up to the right. Joined in the backfield by Clark. Riker, quick handoff off the left. Quick cut. Number Still two. hit at the line. Jace Barton for Blue Ridge coming in on the tackle after a short pickup. That's going to be good for a yard. It's going to make it third and nine for the Elks. You got to wonder how much that quick penalty on that solid return kind of deflated the momentum we built coming right out the gate there. Seems like it's definitely been affecting. I know the crowd's quiet. The crowd is quiet. Hopefully we can pick up a four, uh, first down and uh, keep this drive moving. We'd hate to do a three and out on our first possession here, but let's take a look and see what the Elks have for us. Just a bit out of the hands of Ziegler on that throw. That's going to bring up a fourth down and nine from Round Valley. Presume we're going to punt here. Yeah, I'm not sure what he was, what they were trying to do. Let's look at the replay. Look like he had Ziegler on an out route. Coming to the sideline for enough for the first down and just overthrew him. Yeah, thought he'd be about two yards deeper, looks like, and he wasn't. The snap bounces back to Riker, and he gets off a nice kick down to the 45-yard line. And that's picked up by number 13, and you talked about that, Matthew. So Round Valley Simon coach team. is quite upset because as Riker gets the punt off, he actually gets hit by a Blue Ridge player. He did not get a piece of the ball. That should be a roughing the kicker, and we're not getting that call. I wonder if the issue is, is that I don't think, I think that player dove and slid in underneath Riker instead of actually diving on Riker. I wonder if that's the... Well, that's what he's trying to tell the crowd, but they're not enjoying it. They're <laughs> they're getting a little upset at that. Blue Ridge is true and all night, as they've done all night, comes out straight into formation, get lined up. They've got three wide receivers to the left, one running back with Berlin. Berlin's going to hand off to Jay Spartan right up the middle for a gain of about two. Jackets are going to stay on the line. Makes it tough on your defense to make uh, changes and substitutions when your uh, offense stays out like that. And that's probably one of the things, the tools 
that Coach Hathcock is using to kind of limit the different looks that Round Valley is able to give them. Berlin takes a snap. He's going to throw out again. Number 21, Seth Slaughter on the reception. And they're going to stack him up right about, he might have picked up about one. The plays that they have coming out of uh, this young man's hands, they're quick. We're not able to get pressure on him because um, the ball's out of his hands right away. Yeah, big kudos to the Round Valley coverage tonight. So far, it's been spot on. Catch is being made, but then immediately met with contact, not able to gain much off of him. Looks like we're in a third and seven for Blue Ridge. Ball on the 47 of Round Valley. Berlin's actually going to throw it down the sideline and oh. almost picked off by Walker. He had his hands on it. He had two steps on his receiver, and it almost was like the ball was thrown to him. Oh, well, better luck next time. That's going to be fourth and eight or eh, seven. Looks like they're going to swap out to punt formation. So on the fake, they had Slaughter back as the punt man. I noticed that on, as well. But on this one, it's Franco Harris as the punter, and I don't recall if he was the actual punter on the first time that they punted. I wish I was paying better attention, Scott. That's a <laughs> high snap, and here comes Strayson barely missing that. He had to shorten the kick. It's going to bounce around the 30 or about the 27, all the way back to the 40-yard line. So, yeah, the so net gain on that is seven yards. Yeah. After a, a bounce and a good 12 to 13 yards. Harris had to shorten his stride on that kick because Trace Merrill was bearing down. And as we've talked about earlier, he is a tall individual to kick over. Yep. That punt made things easy on the down markers. First and 10 from the 40. 9.26 left in the Sierra Propane third quarter. Riker in the backfield joined by Clark off to his right. Right up the middle. Oh, sorry. That was Gage Baker. Did he get a pink towel too? He did. Dang it. He tricked me. I'm not going to lie. I never looked at his number. I just saw the pink towel and assumed it was Clark. So Gage Baker right up the middle. That's good for six yards. Solid run. Round Valley returning the favor, pulling the formation or calling the play on the line. Right back up, ready for snap. Oh, man, he was, he was off to the races, but unfortunately he kind of bobbled that pitch. Upset with himself. Able to fall back on it essentially for no gain. So we're still going to be third and about three yards. Man, he was almost to the first down marker before he had to turn around and go back for it. Seems like the defenders are playing that option a little bit different, causing the quarterbacks sometimes to not make that pitch nice, uh, quite as clean and uh, We've seen that ball batted a few times this year in the pitch option and fumbled a few times. Anyway, Elks back on the line. Have a delay of game here. It's going to be a delay of game on Round Valley. <coughs> Some confusion timeout. on what play was Round called. Well, First of the half. Timeout. No delay of game then. Yeah. So whatever Blue are just throwing at us is kind of, uh, again, throwing us off just a little bit where they're bringing pressure, how they're lining up their linemen. We still haven't really found a groove in our running game. We've been able to stretch them out a little bit by throwing the ball, but we're not rolling yet. We're not in a groove right here. yet. Maybe they need a good mountain drip IV hydration therapy give them a little boost to their game, help support their immune system, help them recover. Great for everyone in the family, athletes, teachers, parents, grandparents. Good for your overall health and wellness. Mountain Drip IV Hydration Therapy, mountaindrip.com. 
<clears throat> so Riker in the backfield joined by Mr. Baker. Quick handoff up the middle. Baker Ooh. right next to the first down marker. Line judge has it on the line. Side judge had it a half yard pass. They're going to split the difference and give I, it to him. I am not sure who came in and put a whop on Kyle, but they absolutely hit him and drove him back. Uh, he comes off maybe for a little helmet adjustment. Noah Dana looks like he gets a that nice was block. Number eight for the Yellow Jackets, if I can find a program. That's Trenton Tricky. Freshman Trenton Tricky coming in. Yeah, laying some wood from that safety position. See if they're going to bring number 41, Esparza, from the far side. And they're going to – he's dancing. going to fake the handoff. Riker's going to keep it right down the side. We're going to – going to score yeah, on the no, play, but I guess we're going to have a holding. There's already a block in the back on Jordan. Um, it was not an impressive one, but they're going to throw the penalty nonetheless. Oh. Yeah, he. I mean, he didn't even turn him around. Block he just kind of set a hand offense. on his back. Ten-yard penalty. You know, replay that's first good coaching down. on the Blue side. You get your players to spin into that. Uh, causing or drawing the foul or the penalty in this case uh, nullifies a touchdown. I'll be honest, it, looking at it again, it, it, he didn't even really hit him. He went to hit him. He saw the shoulders in front, let off, and pit, placed a hand on his back. Didn't, the kid didn't even stumble, didn't turn his shoulder, nothing, and they still threw the flag. I mean, it's getting a little out of control, I feel like. The penalties here. Um, the nice thing about having this referee crew, I don't know if we've had them before, um, but once you get into the playoffs, you start seeing crews that you're not familiar with, and so you get penalties that uh, aren't being called by your normal crew, and so it helps the team clean them up. He starts off to the right looking for the option, decides to keep it himself, going to gain about three. Franco Harris, number 32 Same for Blue Ridge, coming in on the tackle. Yeah, well, <laughs> crowd. <laughs> oh, doing their best to egg it on. 6.26 left to play here in the Sierra Propane third quarter. Elks in the lead, 28 to six over the Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets. Quick handoff left side, Baker. He's found some daylight. Getting driven back by three of the Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets, number 69. Aiden, there's that name that he's. Oh, man, I forgot it. What was it? Aiden Olguin. 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 That was good for. About 10 yards for Mr. Baker. Nine, sorry, correction on that. Nine yards. Bring up a third and about seven. Third and seven for the Elks. For the yellow jacket, Is that Gage in the backfield? I don't think so. Is that Clark? Yes. It's Fakes the handoff to Clark. He bounces it to the outside, and he is way out ahead. That's good for a Trail Riders touchdown. No laundry on the field. Like the marble on a 46-yard touchdown run. No penalties. Great blocking up front. He fakes the handoff to the left, keeps it, bounces out to the right. He gets to the outside, and he is gone. Flores back to kick, Marple, Marble with the snap. The ball is down, kick is up and good. Well, we got that score we were wanting. It took us to our second possession, but we got it. So that is going to be Elks 35, Yellow Jackets 6. 
Five minutes, 17 seconds left here in this Sierra Propane third quarter. Hey, if you need any title work done here in Round Valley, go see our friends down at Pioneer Title Agency. They take a professional approach that's not stuffy. I can vouch for that. They're a good time. They'll joke with you while you're in there signing your life away. I know I've used them each time I've uh, refinanced my house, bought my house for the first time. Anyways, if you need some good title work, notary services, things of that nature, go down. See them at Pioneer Title Agency. That's the Carly Beard team down there. Round Valley look like they're staying with the original formation on their kickoff team. Not willing to substitute quite yet after that run back. Flores kicks it down to about seven. Picked up by Antonelli. Gonna run the ball out just short of the 30 yard line. <laughs> Who was that that was uh, playing the role of wedge breaker there? Because <laughs> he, he was getting it. Who was that? Was that Trayson? I can't see that number right there. Or is that Brody? I think it's Brody. Coming down, busting the wedge for Blue Ridge. Getting getting after it. That's what I like to see. First and 10 on the 30-yard line, just shy of the 30-yard line for Blue Ridge. Two split left, one split to the First right, bringing on an extra man, realizing yeah, that they that are uh, one man short. Two split left, two split right, one running back. Berlin is going to hand off straight up the middle to Barton. Pick up about eight yards. Yep, brought down by Mr. Marble. Ladies and gentlemen, every week we like to highlight some of our educators, some of our staff here at Round Valley Unified School District. Tonight, we would like to highlight two individuals. Jack is right back up to the line, Berlin. Ball hits him in the head, ball's on the ground, but they're going to jump on it once again. What did I tell you? They like putting the ball in the deck. They're not turning it over on the fumbles. They do have the one interception, but that's happened a few times. And it's just a matter of time, I feel like, before that's going to end up going the other way. I have seen that young man do that a couple times. I saw him over in Page, and that happened to him. I don't know if he's not quite ready for the snap. And they're just kind of crossed on their signals. That's going to bring up a third down and five. Coach Hathcock directing the formation. Now no running backs. Going to throw the ball back out to 21. Slaughter, and he's going to get the first down. Now the Elks going to work on getting him down out around the 44-yard line. That brought Barton out of the backfield and lined him up on the edge to block Trace and Merrill coming off of the edge because they didn't want him uh, out there being able to raise his hands on that slant. Yep. Great rally from the Elks defenders. Blue Ridge back on the line. They got three split to the right, one to the left, one running back. Looking for the call. They're going to go ahead and line up, snap it. Wide receiver screen once again out here to Slaughter. Round Valley is going to, he might pick up one, maybe. Tracing with the initial contact, getting help from number four. Round Valley's been on that mostly all night. Riley Harlan coming up, giving the assist. Slaughter getting up a little bit gimpy on that play. A couple more plays to work that out. He'll be able to keep going. They go empty backfield once again. Berlin's going to roll out to the left. Oscar with heavy pressure. Oh. Throws the ball out there off the hands of Antonelli. Oscar Seth putting pressure for the first, one of the few times this evening on the quarterback. Yeah, had the open receiver, had coverage over the top, but it was soft. Good two, three yards. Unfortunately, number five unable to bring it in. Yep, overthrew him by about a half a yard. He got fingertips on it, but not enough to haul it in. 
Third down and nine coming up on the 50 yard line, 45 yard line. Berlin's gonna roll out again to the left. He's gonna throw, same play. They're gonna pick up the catch, Antonelli, and pick up the first down. It was open once, let's try it again. Indeed. Now Antonelli's coming out of this side, so let's see if they flip that and throw it out here. Looks like Blue Ridge trying to go to some kind of hurry up offense. Three split to the right, one to the left, one running back. They pull up looking for the play. Running back moves to behind the quarterback. They're gonna hand it, fake it. A little bit of uh, miscommunication there. Berlin went to hand it off on one side. Barton ran off the other side. Lurge is going to line up on the ball again. The advantage just gives it to the offense as they have a chance to see what the formation is the defense is going to put out there. <laughs> then they can call their play. That can't feel good as a quarterback to turn around to hand the ball off, and there's no one there. At least he held on to it. Yes. <laughs> They're going to go empty backfield again. Three right, two to the left. Antonella is going to pick up about eight yards. Getting pushed out by Dallin Walker. Yeah, he's a big, strong receiver, number five. What was that gentleman's name? Elam Antonelli. Great returner, good receiver. Is he a senior? He is. He is a senior. Clear's gonna hand off to Barton right up the middle, number two. That's gonna be forward progress right at the first down marker. Somebody held on low, that looks like Kyle Clark got him, held on the legs. Some additional Elks came in there to clean it up. Fourth and in inches is the call. They are going for this one. I don't know why oh, you're talking nope. to your receivers unless you're doing a now receiver it's first screen. And, there you now go. Now it's first and 10. Interesting. Got mixed signals from uh, referees. Don't know which one to listen to, so I guess I'll pay attention to the white hat. Jackets can stay in this empty set formation, three to the right, two to the left. Berlin's going to take the snap. There's confusion over what's going on here. Was there a timeout called? There must have been, because five was turned around and looking at the coach when Before the ball the snap, was snapped and never. Timeout, white. And never fired First out. So we're down to a minute 18 in the third quarter. Round Valley has a 35 to six lead over Blue Ridge. Hey, if you're looking for some fun in the White Mountains, give our friends at White Mountain Off-Road a call. Book now for your fall getaway or start planning your 2023 adventures. They've got dates available. They do delivery throughout the White Mountains. They've got a fleet of ATVs and UTVs. I know they've got six-seaters and smaller ones, kayaks, paddle boards. I believe they do helmet and trailer rentals as well. If you're looking to get out on some forest roads and have a good time, do some recreating, go down and see our friends at White Mountain Off-Road. Indeed. Still in one from Mr. Holiday this evening. I see what you were doing there. Blue Ridge coming out of the timeout. They're gonna come straight up to formation again. They've been on a nice drive here, eating up the clock here in the third, third quarter. Looking to put some additional points on the board after their single score of the run back on the kickoff. Ten, gonna have one running back in the backfield with Barton. With or Barton is with Berlin. With Berlin. Elks are going to fake the uh, pressure coming up the middle from the uh, linebackers. Give them a different look. Berlin's going to drop back and throw right down the sideline. Right there, Brett Jordan's going to pick off the ball. Oh, on the five yard line. Elam, That's got to hurt. Elam Antonelli throwing him on the fly. Brett Jordan reads it. Just. Comes over, high points the ball, picks it off. 
Double coverage, undercut that route, had help over the top from the corner. Mr. Walker felt confident to go after that pick. And that's the second interception for this Round Valley team tonight. As we move forward into the playoffs, the more experience we get against some teams that throw the ball, it will really help us out here. Riker standing in the end zone to receive the snap as the Elks take over, and there's somebody jumped. Yeah. That's encroachment is the signal I'm Prior getting. The snap, encroachment, defense, five yards, first down. Nice to get out of your own end zone. Yeah, I'll take that cushion. At 69, getting the jump there for the Yellow Jackets, getting that speeding ticket. I expect the Yellow Jackets to put pressure on us here, trying to keep us deep in here and take advantage. Handoff left side, yeah, Gage right. Baker. That's going to be good for about a yard. Uh, 16, Noah Chi and Franco Harris on the tackle. We got 55 seconds left here in this year, propane third quarter. Else got the ball second and about four. It's interesting to watch the line man pointing out their uh, assignments. Ooh, that was Ooh. not good. Yeah, that looked like a face mask or a horse collar. That was not good, that tackle. That was number 16. Uh, yeah, well, Riker is down, Number unfortunately. Six, I don't think that was 16. Who was that on the tackle? Do we know what number that was? 16. That is number 16. Noah Chi on the tackle. That's a sophomore for Blue Ridge. Um, both teams are going to move over. So... Talking a little bit about this Blue Ridge team again. This team is, uh, Coach Hathcock does an extremely uh, fantastic job with what he has. Last year, he came back to Blue Ridge after coaching down, I believe, down at Desert Ridge for years down in the Valley, which followed coaching in Shiloh. But he had some struggles last year. They had some situations come up with kids having to transfer and leave the program. And essentially, after three or four games, he ended up changing the formation. He made use of what skills and talent that he had. I watched them play Winslow tough over there, and it was two, three yards in a pile of dust, and they did very well. And so it's, in, it's impressive to watch. He's able to take the talent that he has within that group or with the, the kids that he has, come out with some different formations to take advantage of weaknesses in his opponents, and his kids execute it well. I know that they're down in numbers, um, but they played us tough tonight. I really think that they have played us tough. The score, 35-6 to six here, 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Uh, Round Valley is up. We're currently on a timeout. Yep, official timeout. Well, Round Valley firmly in control of this ball game. It's 20 seconds left on the clock. Sierra Propane third quarter. Up 35 to six. If that young man walks off the field, I am very impressed. Yep, under his own power. Yeah. Now going ahead and accepting a little help from Coach Baca and Coach. I can't see the other coach. He's got a hat on. He's looking straight down, so he's not helping me out much. All righty. Going to wind up the uh, third quarter here. Team's coming out of their uh, injury timeout. Yep. So it's going to be third and dropped us back to about third and eight, third and seven. Third and seven. I would suspect we're going to see Jordan slide over to quarterback for Round Valley. That'll bring in a... Uh, just kind of shift some players around. Number 10, if that number's not right. Trace Whiting coming in as a receiver. One of our receivers um, getting kicked out a little bit earlier. 
Um, so we're just gonna let the clock roll down, head into the fourth quarter to play. Round Valley up 35 to six. Well, that is a uh, scary thing to happen going into the playoffs, having Riker go down because not only is your starting quarterback, he's been our safety and a force on our defense. Yeah, I, I don't think that the play was an intentionally dirty play. I don't. Just watching it up here, I don't. But when you get yanked down from the side like that, yeah, I hate it when those those tackles get made. There's contact, and then it's a twisting motion to come down on the side. Puts a lot of torque on those knees and ankles, and we just wish the best for Riker as they get him down there and take a look at him and uh, see how he's doing. Yep, hoping for a speedy recovery. Round Valley will have the ball on the six-yard line when they break uh, timeout. Coach Baca has the team down there helping them out. Now, it's been a few games since they've had to play into the fourth quarter. One of the disadvantages of the program, or the, the region schedule that we have, um, it's great to get young kids in there, give them an opportunity to play, but it also takes your varsity team off the field. And so this is uh, one of the few times that the varsity has been able to get it and stay on the field in the fourth quarter, probably in the last month. Yes, indeed. Jordan's set to take the snap. He's going to fake the pitch, and he's going to keep it right up the middle. Twisting, turning, he's going to be brought down by Antonelli. That's a way to answer. He's third and 11. He's going to gain an additional four. It's going to be a 15-yard run for Brett Jordan already saying, hey, don't worry, guys, I got you. Hey, in eighth grade, it was interesting that he was the quarterback and Riker was the running back, and then somewhere along the, the process, it changed. Riker was the quarterback, and he became a running back or a receiver. Um, but he's an impressive young man, and a good talent. He just doesn't have the same number of snaps, but uh, he can throw and run well. Oh, he faked the handoff inside. He's he going to keep it up the head, right side. Down the sideline. Let's see if he can make it to the end zone or if he's going to get cut off. He is going to get hit and get in for the touchdown. That's going to be a 76-yard touchdown by Jeff Jordan. On the well, replay, if we go back to it, watch the angle that Blue Ridge takes. They're well coached. Look at the angles that they, and they stay. They don't try to come on over. They're going to catch him, but that hit put on him by number 41. Trying to Jake shove him Esparza out of bounds. Wasn't enough. Fantastic run by Jordan. You know, that's really encouraging for these Elks to be up against an injury to your quarterback and come out and let it kind of pull that team together and make some big plays. And Flores on for the extra point. That's up and good. Brown Valley taking the lead 42 to 6, 11 16 to go here in the fourth quarter. What a range of emotions there for the past five, 10 minutes. Having an injury come up, new quarterback coming on, taking the ball for a 76 yard touchdown run. Thank the high school pep band for the fight song. Give the uh, crowd a chance to join in. Rikers down on the field walking around. That's a good sight to see. Indeed, I like it. Walk it off. That's what I was always told. And we still have that original kickoff team, so we are not messing around. We're not gonna bring in the subs quite yet. Flores is gonna boot it, and this looks like that'll make it to the end zone. Blue Ridge will go ahead and get that on their 20 to start this drive.
Round Valley's gonna have to make a few changes with uh, Riker going out. Uh, we've lost Jordan Elmer, who normally will play either a corner or one of the safety positions for us. So it looks like they're gonna bring in number eight, Kenley Caldwell, that's one of our seniors this evening. He's gonna play one of the corner positions. Uh, Jordan's gonna be one of the safeties. Looks like they have Dallin Walker playing center field for the First moment as the other safety. Line. Berlin's Berlin back, fakes the pass. He's gonna hand it off to Barton. And number 80, Brian Acosta there with the tackle. So with that touchdown, guess what? The Elks have passed 400 yards on the night. Fantastic. 312 on the ground, 92 in the air so far. That'll get us over the 400 mark. They're just going to flip formation, bring three down to the left, one to the top, one running back. They're going to hand it to him straight up the middle. Kids still are playing hard on both sides of the ball, and it looks like it's going to be pretty clean. That's a good sight to see. Luridge back on the line, looking to the coaches, calling their plays. Getting lined up. Looks like we're going to have one in the back, one with the quarterback in the backfield. Berlin drop, Berlin gonna drop back the pass and 41, Esparza off his hands. Intended for number 41, Jake Esparza. All right, I gotta tell you about a cool thing happening this week from our friends down at Booga Reds. Not only are they still working on getting DoorDash in there, but they have a special for this week. It's homemade chicken fried steak dinner Local beef, homemade mashed potatoes and gravy, your choice of another side. This Tuesday, November 1st, from 5 to 9, Booga Reds. Get in on that chicken fried steak dinner, all local ingredients. Franco Harris with the punt. It's going to land right about the 46 and take a yellow jacket bounce all the way down to the 36 of Brown Valley. Pick up of about 20 yards on that bounce. Jordan coming back out to lead the offense for the Elks. Indeed. You know who I haven't talked about tonight? Dan the Truth Muth. Hey, if you need some surveying done, Get with the man, Dan Muth. He's going to take good care of, care of you. Buying, selling, splitting land. Dan's the man. We miss him. We love him. Give Dan your business. We appreciate it. Hand off up the middle to Clark. He's bouncing, bobbing, and weaving. He's going to make it out to about the 44 yard line. <laughs> A little awkward. Run, but still good for. I'm gonna say eight. It's closer to eight than it is seven. So, good for eight yards for Clark. Ran into his blocker, was able to kind of hop, step, change directions, and pick up about three more. Some good shiftiness out of Clark tonight. Oh, bobbled the snap. Oh, and it, he's, he's going to pick it up off the deck, and he's off to the races. Down to the 30 is Brett Jordan, a pickup. About 26 yards by my count. Wow. He's over 100 yards rushing in the past 10 minutes. I mean, he's got to be getting close to 150 already. All that off a, a bobbled. Snap and just a broken play. Okay, 
Jordan Hand off right side to Clark. Hard run for nine yards for Clark. And I never took it off replay because I heard voices in my head. This walkie-talkie was going off. My bad. Sorry to all you watching at home. Were they watching? It was the a thing of beauty. Were they watching the previous play? Yeah, it was on a loop because they were watching the replay of the replay. So they got the broken, the broken play and the amazing run by Jordan twice. Well, we missed that good hard nine yards by Clark, and for that I apologize. Looks like Baker. Oh, this time no magic to be found. High off the fingertips, he's able to catch it and bring it back down. But it's going to be third and about 12. The one thing that uh, he hasn't had is just the number of snaps that Rikers had, and so there's just going to be a little bit of an adjustment there. Yeah. Between the center and the quarterback, getting used to that. You know, pretty athletic for it to go off his fingertips like that, be able to track it in the air, turn, get his body turned all the way around and get back on it quickly and not go down, but was looking to try and make a play, but Yellow Jacket's already on him. Going to get a block in the back. I'm not sure who that was. Oh, my goodness. That was Brody out there. Illegal block in the back, number 12 offense, 10 yards, replay third down. Mm. Well, I'll see if we can catch it on the replay. Yep. Right there at yep. the end. I mean, yep, I, I don't know what else to say about it. And I think he was good. I mean, that guy turned on him and ran away, and I think he was good if he had just kind of stood there yeah. without the just additional push. Getting a little excited. But hey, that's why we love Brody. Absolutely. Oh. Looks like we're gonna have add a little bit more into that. Prior to the snap, false start offense, five yard penalty. Still third down. That, that mm. was uh Tracen. Thinking it'd be nice to just get a little extra momentum. Baker back to receive the snap. Bobbles the ball again, and Burridge is going to pick it up right at the 50. Yeah, had a hard time reining in the snap, tried to hand it off quickly, and kind of got it to the helmet as he's trying to bring it down instead of the chest, and it just turned into a kerfuffle from there. Very nice, bringing in the kerfuffle. Well, I mean, that's what it looked like to me. If okay. you'd like to call it something else, by all means. Nah. Before I was sitting, Fantastic. that was a kerfuffle. In lieu of the 76-yard run that he did earlier, We'll, we'll give take him some, it, Mr. Jordan. We'll give him some growing pains. Yeah. Six minutes left to play here in your Molly Butler Lodge fourth quarter. Your Elks up 42 to 6 over the Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets. Merlin's going to bring the slaughter in motion and pitch it to him. Maybe a. Oh, he's running deep. That, that's that, going to be a big loss. That may have been a uh, pass. And, Intended pitch it to Slaughter and let him throw it, but there was nothing going on on that one. Well, that was Brody getting his 10 yards back. Good job, Brody. I mean, just about exactly. So, again, that's why we love him. Burridge back on the line. Berlin's going to take the ball and throw off on a, a screen out here to Barton. Good Brody's tackle again, Brody. Taking care of business. Pickup of about seven. Clark. 
clock winding down under five minutes. We sit at 4.47. And uh, look like we got a substitution. Jeffrey Cochran coming in for Brody. Right Berlin's going to roll out, throw it back here to Elam Antonelli there, number five. It's going to pick up the first down on a long 15-yard <laughs> pickup. For Looks Blue like Ridge. one elk had him, the other elk came in to help and knocked him off. <laughs> It happens. Blue Ridge is not done. They are pushing down the field, see if they can pick up another score before this runs out. Yeah, it looked like uh, Brody got stepped on that play when he kind of got up a little slow. Probably just getting that calf slash ankle checked out. Chase Barton spins out of that right into a hit by Trayson Merrill. Not today, Mr. Barton. I would have showed you the replay, but they were kind of acting like they were going to go fast, and then they just never did. Empty backfield for Berlin. Going to throw it out here to the left. Number 20 down the sideline is going to score. Oh, going to pick up 37-yard touchdown. Number 20, Samuel James, sophomore for Blue Ridge. Yep. That was uh, number eight in coverage. Thought he was going to get the interception. Unfortunately, he's not quite as tall as he thought he was. Right over his head into the arms of number 20, and that's good for a Blue Ridge score. That's going to bring your score here in the fourth quarter. 42 for your Elks, 12 for the Yellow Jackets. Looking to make it 13 with the kick. Uh, looked it. wide left, and it was. The extra point still eludes the uh, Yellow Jackets. So it's going to be 42-12. to 12. Your Elks with a commanding 30-point lead. Three and a half left to play in this Molly Butler Lodge fourth quarter. Oh, I would do just about anything for some Molly Butlers right now. I am hungry. I did not eat near enough today. I was. You were up and at it early, I know that much. I was busy. And I, and I bought some burritos at shortstop and my dad helped me eat them. So. so the Elks look like they're going to finally start doing those substitutions again. Are we gonna see a onside kick from Blue Ridge? I would suspect. Uh, maybe, I don't know. It feels a little try hard at this point. Three and a half left to play, down by 30. You know, what, what are you looking to gain unless you're wanting to practice that for later on in the playoffs and this is just a, a game time opportunity, but Round Valley gearing up with a, a hands focused formation. Yeah. Not, they're ready for it, anticipating it. So maybe you're onto something. They got a few of the freshmen out there trying to figure out, okay, where do we fit in on this varsity setup? You're going to boot it down. You're going to kind of pooch it down to about the 15. Walker's going to run it on out. Get it out to about the 32-yard line. Excellent return. Appreciate Blue Ridge uh, and sportsmanship that they're showing, helping the kids up, patting them on the head after the, the runs, kind of after that play with Riker. They've, things have gone well. And again, I don't think that play with Riker was done with any malintent. It was just the play of the game, or the yeah. play at that moment. But Blue Ridge showing some poise here and good sportsmanship. Yeah, when I first looked at it, I thought maybe face mask or, or horse collar, the way he twisted him down. But it was just a handful of jersey, perfectly legal. Oh, handoff left side, Clark. Oh! Right into the back of who was that, 18? Yeah, I think that's Trace Whiting. But he gets up. He's fine. Just come back and say thank you. May I have another? So from the 33 to the 46 is how many yards? Math people. 
13. I like it. I could have done the math, but I didn't want to. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> right up the middle. Number 60 for Blue Ridge Helmon early. I don't have his number on my roster. I don't have a 60 either. They blew the play dead. Yeah, Baker and a 68. Clark substituting for one another. Could it be 68? No, it's definitely 6-0. Okay, well, kudos to you, number 60. I wish I had your name. Jordan just watching the time. Going to hand up the middle to Clark once again. Oh. Oh, that seemed unnecessary. There we go. And they're going to get the flag for the extra effort on that tackle well after the whistle. We're going to go ahead and show it again as they get ready to step off some yards. Whistle's blown Personal here. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness I, on the defense. I think the kid was just trying to the end of the run. get him be down, a first down. Just not really thinking about the situation of the game, so learning opportunity there. Yep. And again, number 60. Don't know who you are, but there we go. And off to Baker, he's going to cut it back right up the middle. <laughs> kind of get caught there, run into Trace. 69, grabbing the ankle, refusing to let go of Mr. Baker. Ran into Trace, and then Trace decided to go get a block for him. And but he couldn't he quite was tied shake, up. <laughs> shake the Klingon, Captain. Ugh. Star Trek jokes, that's what I've been reduced to tonight, Scott. It's not, it's not, and it's I'm not, not a Star Trek fan, so I can't even pick up on him for you. Sorry about that. Oh, that's too bad. It really is too bad. Clock getting ready to tick under a minute here in the fourth quarter. Jordan just watching it, letting the time run before they take the snap. Second five, Jordan from the shot. Hand off up the middle. Gage Baker. Baker once again. It's awesome. Daylight. That was 10 yards, I believe, if I count correctly. 10 yards for Mr. Baker. All right, 46 seconds left. This clock ticks down. Hey, do you need any uh, screen printing or embroidery work done? We're going to go ahead and kneel on it. This is the end of the, the game here. If you do, go see our friends at Backwoods Tees. Hey, they've been serving the White Mountain since 2017. They do embroidery, screen printing. They do custom apparel. They do hats, patches. Visit them at backwoodstees.com. So you got a large selection of apparel. And check them out on Facebook for even more information. Backwoods Tees. Thanks for being a proud sponsor of Let's Go Elks. Hey, it's a good sight to see number three walking across the field here. Yep. Getting ready to shake hands with the other team. He's a little ginger, but otherwise walking well. Again. 42 to 12, Round Valley beating Blue Ridge. Blue Ridge coming in playing this tough this evening. Coach Hathcock doing a fantastic job with his group, getting the team ready, showing some wrinkles in their formations, making the, the game challenging on Round Valley. Round Valley came in ranked higher than Blue Ridge, kind of expected them to win, but Blue Ridge was not laying down for this matchup. Um, a lot of class, a lot of class being shown this evening by Blue Ridge. There's been some opportunities for less class in the past. Uh, bad blood, I wouldn't necessarily say bad blood, just uh, but the team
teams look like they are doing well this evening. Blue Ridge is taking it. They fully expect them to make it into the playoffs. Hey, Wes is coming down be to on the road. Place. Find them around the 50. Uh, we don't know until Tuesday come out when the rankings and everything has changed who they will be playing, but they look like they're in the playoffs again. Round Valley out there with the student body singing the fight song yeah, at the end of let's this. Let's get a shot of that. We don't need to see us. I don't know what I'm doing here. Strong showing way to close out the season. I wish we could have done it in a little cleaner fashion, my friend. Yeah, um, we had some struggles in the penalty area like you were concerned with. I was really hoping to see some improvement. That was I wanted that to be our, Thank you. our uh, Winslow McNeil adjustment of the game, but it just was not meant to be. Appreciate your help tonight. Howdy. Have a good one. Drive home safely. Lisa helping us out on the stats this evening, doing a fantastic job. She really did. Here, let me uh, switch over. Let's just take a look at where we ended up on the night on our shortstop stats. 388 and 92. That's a lot of yards, Mr. Scott. Yeah, they always That's had a... 407, 80, 480 yards. Had Unless some, math escapes me. Had some big plays going on this evening. Uh, I really felt that Blue Ridge just threw some wrinkles in there to make it challenging. I mean, we played four quarters tonight. We haven't played four quarters in a while. So um, the Round Valley coming out and doing well. It's great to see Riker walking off the field out there with the team. Hopefully get some ice on that, a little bit of rest. We'll be back on the field shortly taking care of business once again. Yeah, Riker 100 yards rushing, Gage 52, Dallin 39, Kyle Clark bringing in 75, Brody with 7, and Brett Jordan 115 yards tonight. I think you got to take your hats off to uh, Mr. Jordan and his performance, Mr. Uh, Flexible. You need me to run the ball, I'll run the ball. You need me to throw the ball, I'll throw the ball. You need me to intercept it, I'll intercept it. Fantastic. I like it. Fantastic performance by Mr. Jordan, helping Mr. Marble leading the Elks to yep. victory. Lone Mr. Moose sack tonight. We're Pick up that microphone, Mr. Moose. Get on. Join this evening. Where you been all my life, Mr. Truth Moose? Gentlemen, gentle. Let We're me turn you back up. Tied in there. Try that. Hey, how how you guys been? We've been good. How's how's Mr. Moose been? You know, I'm I'm a little cold, trying to <laughs> thaw out, hustle back from <laughs> Sanders tonight. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's a long drive. St. John Sanders, it was a game for the first quarter. Oh, one of those games. I looked up earlier, yeah. and it was like the score was done. Did they start early? We did. We started an hour early and had a running clock by halftime. Okay, that'll do it. Yeah, the, all I can say about that game is. Sanders is ready to start basketball season. So, and yeah. They, and they will be taking no prisoners. Well, Mr. Muth, it's been a challenge on the refs this year. The shortage of refs, variation in the schedule to get the games done. How have you uh, been holding up? You know, <laughs> I'm a little rubber-legged. I'm, <laughs> I'm ready for a break. So, my season is over tonight. Doesn't look like I'm going to get any postseason post work, so. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you guys want me back. Oh, we'll take you back. Any chance Absolutely. we get to talk to you. So what happened tonight? I know you're probably coming in late to the party, but we had Mr. Elmer with two personal fouls and getting ejected. Yes. Is that going to disqualify him for his game next week? He's got a one game. Yeah. One game suspension. So he'll be out next week. Um, so that's six quarters, not able to play the entire second half. And four quarters next week. Yeah, and, you know, I got to – so because our game finished the way it did, I actually got to pick it up as I was driving back. Uh, about five minutes into the second quarter. Okay, so. So I got to listen to most of it, and there were some dead spots. But, yeah, I, I was a little disappointed 
seemed like a lot of the penalties were going one way. I actually had eyes on the fourth quarter down here. And uh, yeah, uh, with the officiating crew from down south, they are not used to the physicality that we play with up here. So I think that had a lot to do yeah. with the penalty yardage that Round Valley accumulated tonight. Yeah, unofficially uh, on our stats tonight, that's 140 yards for the Elks versus 10 for the Yellow Jackets. That's 12 to two. Yeah, and I gotta make a comment. So Scott, you made an excellent observation. From this point forward through the playoffs, Round Valley's not gonna see local crews. They're gonna see guys from down south. They've got to tighten up their gameplay. They have to. They have to tighten that up. The blocks in the backs, some of those things that do happen that shouldn't happen, they gotta get that cleaned up in the next week. Have to. I'm calling it right now as far as our adjustment of the game week going to the playoffs coach we got to get this penalty situation figured out because it's killing us it's killing momentum it's getting it's getting people's adrenaline up and down and we just can't have it we're our, now we're down a receiver for next week um i would really like to see round valley get that cleaned up i was hoping to see it tonight unfortunately it seems like we started right out of the Right out of the shoot, getting a few calls, and then we didn't really slow down after that. So, Well, you know, the guys get used to playing a certain way, and what happens is you get a crew that's not used to watching this style of ball game, and they, they just have a different way of officiating based on what they see down south. So I, I wouldn't expect you to see much different. Um, I will say, though, that it seemed like it was a little bit targeted. I mean, especially in the fourth quarter when you've got the line judge watching Kyle Clark go down on a knee and then get drug and flipped over, you know, yeah. and the umpire is coming from across the field to throw the flag. The line judge was right there. That should have been him. I, I definitely felt that was a little weird because, I mean, it was clearly whistled dead, and I felt like uh, Clark kind of gave himself up and then got tossed over. He got the flag, but it didn't come from who I would have expected to throw it. So I'm glad you made that observation. I didn't want to call it out because I didn't want to add more fuel to the fire because <laughs> well, I was already kind of like, eh. Now, I will say this, though. I would imagine that at halftime, that crew was having a conversation amongst themselves about, hey, you know, we've got we've to make some adjustments ourselves. They're probably in their post game on their way home tonight going to be having the same conversation so you know officiating here's the thing in a ball game like this officiating is not going to make a difference when you're up 30 points had this been like i i was thinking this is going to be like a 21 14 ball game had it been had that been the case well yeah then then you have to start having the conversation so you know tonight i think it was them not being used to calling ball up here. Our guys just not making the adjustments they needed to make. So, But like I said, I listened to most of it. I didn't get to see all of it. Fantastic finish to the senior regular season for the seniors on the team. Um, yeah, I don't know if you heard, but over 400 yards, total yards tonight. Those are some video game stats for this Round Valley team on on this Yellow Jacket squad. Well, they definitely came out fired up. I mean, it's been two years since they played Blue Ridge, and the last time they did, it left a bad taste in their mouth. So, yeah. you know, you guys had made the observation during the stream that maybe Round Valley was looking for a little retribution. I think that definitely, definitely came into play uh, because they, you know, they've been fired up all week. I know I've, you know, I've had a couple conversations with uh, Brett Jordan, and, yeah, they, they wanted this one. They definitely wanted to make a statement. But you can't take away from Blue Ridge either. Very young team, new coach. I look for big things in their future because, you know, they have played pretty salty against some pretty heavy-hitting teams this year. Uh, I don't think the Sholo game is really indicative. The score in the Sholo game doesn't really tell you how well they played against Sholo because there was a lot of other factors at play there. But uh, 
I wouldn't count Blue Ridge out. I think they're going to be a force to be reckoned with in the, as a, being a part of the Beast of the East. Oh, absolutely. I think I counted earlier 12 freshmen and sophomores that dot that lineup for varsity. Maybe they may not, may, might not all be starters, but they're contributing factors on that team. I think they have a fantastic future for them. Yeah. Coach. Well, and let's not forget, at the beginning of the season, there was rumors flying around about a bunch of kids from Blue Ridge who went to Sholo to play. Some kids from Sholo came to Blue Ridge to oh, play. Oh, really? All because of, you know, maybe some philosophical differences with the coaching staff. I don't know what. Oh, okay. And I don't know how, you know, how rumors are up here. It, you know, you never really know where the truth is. I like to think it's somewhere in the middle. But I think what's going to happen is you're going to see a lot more buy-in in Blue Ridge, and you're going to see that program rebuild, retool, refit, and come back next year hungry and angry. They have some players that I was definitely impressed with. We've talked about Berlin a lot, their quarterback, how he plays the game. Really all night didn't we didn't get a lot of pressure on him. They have a safety, uh, Tricky, that just puts the wood on people. He comes up and hammers people in the opportunity. There's some others mixed in there that just played really well as freshmen. That's tough to do on a varsity level, and they're doing it. Absolutely. When you have freshmen that are stepping up and making plays for you at the varsity level, especially when you come into the Dome as a freshman and you play like that, I, you know, this place is intimidating. It's not your typical stadium. So for those guys to be able to come up and play big like that, I think that's huge. I think it speaks volumes to what their future is going to be. Now, having said all that, Round Valley is a fairly young team itself. So I look for great things coming out of the next couple of years out of Round Valley because as these kids mature, they're going to take off. And when they do, it's going to be exciting to watch. I'm really excited for the 7th and 8th grade group, specifically the 8th grade group coming in. If we can keep the numbers that they had, and I know this has been an issue of 8th graders coming in, they would keep about half of what played in 8th grade. Half would go do other things. and If we can keep those numbers up, we might get back to the point where we have a varsity JV and a freshman team. Yeah, I don't know what it is about making the transition from junior high into high school where a lot of these kids just drop out of football and decide they don't want to play anymore. I've never, you know, and I coached down Hello, at Hello, Wes. Can you oh. hear us? we got a whole handful down there. Yeah, i got all kinds of buttons to push. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? There we go. I got you now. All right. I am joined by half of the Elks football team apparently right now, but that's just what happens. Um, joined by the seniors and number 23, Mr. Brett Jordan, for tonight. Number 23, I, I don't even – I we'll get into the numbers in a minute, but player of the game tonight, both sides of the ball, just crazy game. And so, Trayson, tell me what made him the player of the game in our eyes tonight. I feel like he got in like a tough situation today, and uh, he, he stepped up and made plays. He absolutely did. What do you think? What side of the ball? Tell us. Highlight of the game tonight for Mr. Brett Jordan here. Oh, his hit. His bam, his smash. Dear gosh, dang. That was, that was my highlight. For this. Yeah, I want to talk about that one later. It's fantastic. You different highlight? What do you think, Mr. Brett Jordan, tonight? Uh, that long run was pretty sweet. Made a couple of nice moves. That spin move was pretty cool, too. I like it. I yeah. like it. All right, so for the seniors that are here tonight, I want you guys to tell me something about one of the other seniors that are here. This being the last regular season game, we're heading in to the postseason. We were just looking at the rankings. Um, I guess Florence lost this evening, so that's going to shake things up. There's no telling tomorrow what we're going to see. I think you guys have locked in a home game. I don't think there's any question with that. So the Elks are playing at home tomorrow. But, Trayson, tell me something about one of the other seniors Highlight of the year, something that makes them them. Just talk to me about somebody else here. Well, I'm going to talk about Keanu. Keanu Clark last year got hurt during the season last year, like towards this time of the year, and I'm, I'm just happy to see the dog back out on the field with us. That's what's up. Keanu, the king, if I'm not mistaken. I know it's been a week or two, but the king, Mr. Keanu Reeves. So here, let's just pass, let's pass the phone. But seniors, I want you to tell me about one of the other seniors out here tonight and something that makes them them. Armando is definitely Armando. He's he brings the heart and soul to this team. His his enthusiasm and his he's always hyper. He's always got something to say. He makes he makes the second half. He makes everybody laugh. He's the club. 
say Donald Walker, every time he's a small guy, but works the hardest and makes plays for our team and always pushes me to be, be hard to play harder when I'm when I get the chance to play. Uh, Riley Harlan, because he used to play linebacker last season and all the seasons before, but he stepped up his DB and he's been playing really good at DB. I gotta talk about my boy Trayson Merrill. This boy right here is a dog, absolute dog. You put him anywhere from the line, linebacker, to get in the ball, this boy will make a play. I'm probably just going to talk about Keanu, Devin. I really look after him. And I just, yeah, this boy is a dog right now. He's a dog. <laughs> Here, I got Kenley Caldwell. My man is a, he's a Dang good wrestler at that, and he works hard. He's super strong. So, yeah, we're good. I got I got Kimmy. Talk about Kevin Flores. Flores. Yeah, he's, he's my buddy. I love his kids. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I would have to go with all the seniors, the really hard workers. I think with, well, Without them, we wouldn't even be here. So uh, I think they're all great and great season. I can't really just talk about one person in uh, here around me, but I'm giving all proper to uh, everyone, all the seniors, because it's the bond that we created since uh, Little League and middle school, coming up to high school. So yeah, it's all the seniors. We make it. We make it happen. I gotta say, all the seniors as well, because. I wasn't gonna play this year, but Marco told me that this might be the last time I get to play with any of these guys, so I'm really grateful that I ended up playing with them. So one thing that, that got brought up is changing positions in your senior year. We saw Hogel do it a few years ago, move to guard and it made an entire difference. We've seen your guys' offense go through phases and shifts throughout the season, but I really feel like things have kind of started to lock in and dial in and we see a different else offense. And I think we might attribute a little bit to that to this gentleman that got a new number. Trayson, what does it feel like to get a new position your senior year to change it up? How's that been for you? It's been pretty fun, actually. Being on the line with all my boys, it's, it's, it's been a blast. Nice. And Riley, where are you at? You're changing it up, too. Where do you go? Oh, he got behind me. So talk to me. What is, it, what is it about getting a new position your senior year that you may have never done before? How's that been? I mean, it's been all right. Um, honestly, I'm just trying to play where the coaches need me to play. Uh, so... I don't know. I like I like to be more than linebacker too. It's a, it's a lot of fun. You're so. enjoying it. Yeah, I am very much so. Yeah. Nice. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, let's finish things up with Mr. Brett Jordan, the Let's Go Else player of the game. Both sides of the ball, all over the place. We've got you at 120 yards rushing, 40 receiving, a touchdown, and an interception. Sum up tonight in a few words, sentences, emotions, feelings. I don't even know. How did tonight go for you? Uh, I don't know. It's <laughs> I don't know. It ran real good. I don't know with my hands. Know how to go? Right, they took Rekko out, and I don't know. Everyone was like, "We definitely make a play." We, I always score on speed option. That's what thing. That's yeah. what thing. Speed option is my thing. You guys think he stepped up in there at a moment when it could have really changed things? Hundred yeah. percent, right? You enjoy yourself tonight. Thank you. you too. Right on. So Brett, the player of the game for Let's Go Elks, guys. All of your seniors, you guys happy about a home game next week for the playoffs? What do you guys think? All right, ladies and gentlemen, your senior class, Mr. Brett Jordan, back up to the top. This let's go out. Thanks, Wes. Wow, that was fun. So <clears throat> I'm choking. So do you guys want to? You guys want to hear something that's kind of ironic that puts irony, irony on the fact that he's player of the game. Last night, Emily came home this weekend. So last night, Brett and Emily are in my kitchen, and uh, we got done with volleyball, and we're all just hanging out and talking at the house. And I told Brett, I said, based on what I've seen from out of Blue Ridge over the season, I said, if you play your cards right, you should have a really big night. <laughs> you should have a big night. And, he, and, you know, he did the him, Han, and Shucks thing like he just did down there. But, you know, I was being honest with him because I, I know what the Blue Ridge defense was all about. I knew what he was capable of. It was just a matter of whether the play calls were going to go his way, and it sounded like they did. So, indeed, they did. He st he he stepped up. He played well. 
he's played well all year. I've been impressed with that young man. Um, he's an incredible athlete and fun to watch. You know, coaches have a few things that they want. They want size. They want speed. They want talent. They want all those things, and he is those. And it's it's fun to watch him do that. Uh, props to Mr. Jordan. He did fantastic. Dan, the the truth man, was speaking truth <laughs> last night to to Brad. That's funny. That I, is ironic. You're clairvoyant now. I guess yes, so. He is. Well, you know, two weeks ago he went on a visit to eastern New Mexico. He was invited down by the football team for a visit. Got to spend some time with the eastern New Mexico Greyhound football team. And the coaches are talking him up. So, you know, there might be some big things in his future after know. next year. I don't know that we know anything about eastern New Mexico around here. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned a lot more than I thought. But, yeah, I was really surprised, you know, when we, I got a call from Emily saying, yeah, Brett's got a visit down here. I'm like, Oh, well, how fortuitous is that? So, um, but, yeah, I, Brett Jordan, he's definitely got what it takes to go to the next level if he if that's what he decides to do. I think he's I think he's the total package. Uh, I think Riker's got some big things in his future as well. There are several of those players that should be, on, should be able to go on and play at the next level at some level. Who is this guy? What is, <laughs> that's what I'm <laughs> saying. As soon as I saw him. Uh, you know, walk up here. I'm like, Dan, put on a headset. I want to talk to you. You just give this mic to anybody now, apparently. No, ladies and gentlemen, Dan the Truth Man in the house tonight. Dan the Clairvoyant now. He, <laughs> he He's claiming he predicted this huge no, night I did. from Brett Jordan. I told Brett last night in my kitchen. Uh, with what happens the, in the kitchen? And I've got <laughs> witnesses, Emily, Lisa, Allison. We were all standing there, and I told him. I said, based on what I've seen out of the Blue Ridge so far this football season, you should have a big night. It happened. It absolutely happened. Yes, it so did. I, I called it. <laughs> I'm claiming it. I'm taking credit for it. I for told all it. of it. Well, you know. Hey, so how did how'd Sanders St. John's go? That's where you were this evening, correct? Uh, I was telling Ethan. And oh, did you already yes. talk about it? I'm sorry. A little bit, but uh, basically, you know, both teams, they were just out there having fun. St. John's is under the impression that they don't have a playoff bid, but we looked at the rankings, and they actually do. Where are they at position-wise? Uh, they were they were at 16, I believe, when we checked at halftime. So on the bubble, right on the bubble, they're on a playoff the bubble. play. Yeah. Uh, uh, they're 14. 14. So, so Okay, so there. And with a win tonight, did they beat Valley Sanders? They did. So St. John's probably playing away, but absolutely yeah. playing next week. But they they were under the impression on the field that, their season was over. So they were out there just playing relaxed and having fun. Well, good. Sanders was relaxed, having fun. They're 0 and 8, 0 and 9 on the season now. Oh. Looking forward to basketball. Yeah, they're just getting, they're just conditioning. That's uh, what this is conditioning for basketball season. Is and to Sanders' credit, you know, they had 13 total football players. Oh, really? So they're playing Ironman. There, there is nothing. And, and Sanders is one of those teams. When we were playing 2A ball, I honestly, there is so much respect from me when those teams come back out from halftime onto the field because they know they've got to play another 24 minutes of ball, and they do it. And so my hat's off to those teams that have, I want to say a struggling program in the fall season, but like you said, basketball is going to be a whole different whole different situation for them. Uh, but my, my hat's off, my respect to them for, for getting out in the field. Yeah, and week. I found out that my daughter Allison has quite the fan base with a bunch of the defense defensive players for St. John's. Okay. Uh one of them came up and, you know, shook my hand, told me his name, and I said, oh, well, I'm Dan Muth. And he stops and he looks at me for a second. It's are him. You, are you Allison's dad? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah. And then everybody's like, hey, Allison's dad. So I'm like, yeah, hi, guys. How you doing? So Allison may be going to prom in St. John's, it sounds like. I, There's a possibility that that might be. I never know. I don't know either. Anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us for the Lackey Reynolds postgame show. Here in the Dome as the Round Valley Elks finish their regular season 7-3, um, and three, right? Have I got those numbers right? I believe we were 4-3, and three, had a three-game win streak right there. We're now 7-3 and three as we head in to the postseason, and Florence lost what I heard on the floor. Yes, they did. Yeah. So that could change our situation a little bit for us. But as I understand the bracket, six or seven leaves us in the same part of the bracket. We'll be in the bottom half of the bracket either way. 
uh, which the way if it was to be drawn today, if I remember looking right, there would be Sholo, Thatcher in the top of the bracket in the positions that they're currently in. We would reside in the bottom half of the bracket. And depending on how tonight rolls would, would indicate when we see Eastmark. I think in that part of the bracket is really what we'd be looking at from a game perspective. So, yep. um, man, I would lo- we're going to all be different places tomorrow. I would love to do a bracket show, and maybe we can later in the day if we all get back to Round Valley at some point. Um, I was really hoping it'd be Tuesday because then we got a day or two to plan it. But, ladies and gentlemen, we may, th- we may throw something together and do a bracket reveal and kind of talk up yeah. some thoughts, I guess. Especially if you look at the, the bottom end of this bracket. I mean, Monument Valley gets a big win. Safford loses, Benson loses, Blue Ridge loses, Payson loses, Santan gets a win. I don't remember how Mojave did, but uh, there could be some shakeup in that bottom. So there's no telling, right? Yeah. Tomorrow, hopefully, we know. And usually they'll do the bracket for the postseason yeah. on Saturday so the teams have a week to get ready. You're going to start watching film tomorrow. Getting well, ready. The, best, the best thing that could happen for Round Valley for next week is if we see a team from the south from – that it from somewhere hard in the middle they come up here in altitude elevation yeah yeah and then you know that gives us home field advantage that because if we can play them hard and keep them and just keep them engaged in that first half we have a good chance of pulling away in the second half just because of fatigue just conditioning alone just elevation alone um so exciting stuff guys when we know more we'll let you know more we'll post the bracket when we see it we'll get things going um I'm always interested to hear what was the adjustment of the game. Ethan, what did you guys call the Winslow McNeil adjustment of the game tonight? I called for an adjustment this week. I said, Coach, we've got to get on top of these penalties. I'm tired of them. How'd I know it felt a little one-sided, but there were still some stupid mistakes and some blocks. I mean, some of those blocks in the back, whether you agreed with the refs or not, they were there. They were happening. So interesting. You so know, that, That's things we got to clean up. So the This needed. is postseason ball. We can't. When you're, I think Dan said it best. When you're up by 30, of course he it's did. easy to kind of shrug them off. But when you're in a close game or down by a score, those are going to matter. Yep. And we can't have that going into next week. Yeah, you cannot. When you're in a one-possession ball game, you cannot give up 90 yards of penalties. Was that the total? Was it 90? No, it, sure, it was we over about 120. Okay. I was like, it felt like a lot more. It, it was 90 140 and yards, 140. and I think we missed one 15-yarder. So. so at least 12 penalties for the Round Valley Elks yep. tonight, for causing 140 yards. It seemed like it was every series. It really did from what I saw. And it, it, there was just a lot of laundry on the floor all night, unfortunately. Um, but I, I like that concept. I like considering we're making – the call for a proactive adjustment instead of a reactive because when you go see the chiropractor legit i went and saw winslow this week my hip is not happy i went because it's reactive because i needed the help but here's a call for a proactive situation to say guys we need to find a way to dial this in make a change especially going into the playoffs i like it well going into the playoffs you're going to see more crews out of the valley or down south and because of that in the style of ball game that they're used to calling we have to do everything to the T optimally. We we just have to. We have to do it better than everybody else because if we don't, if we get sloppy, then we get the laundry. I and that's and that's just it. And there'll be zero tolerance. And I feel like that always seems to work to our disadvantage when we either go there right quarterfinals time. We head down to the valley to play, and there's a valley crew. Or we have a crew that comes up that's unfamiliar with what we'll call mountain ball, right, or how, how a lot of the 3A East seems to play a little bit rough and tumble mm-hmm. football. And that is, it's an adjustment. It always is. I know we talked about this on the way to Yuma last year. Ethan, you and I were like, we're headed all the way across the state. We're going to a completely foreign area. How is it going to react when when we get there, right? How's yeah. that crew going to take our style of, of well, football? And so. it's a factor. You have to coach. You have to coach for that. Yep. You have to. Because you know, going into the playoffs, it will become a thing. Yeah, I mean, I almost feel like um, Coach Baca has kind of had a struggle this season with uh, the players a little bit because it felt like in the in the beginning of the season he was really on top of a lot of this stuff, and it kind of left you know getting on the really you could see him on the sidelines kind of getting on to players after making them you know kind of keeping the just trying to rein it in a lot and what happened was it seems like 
we didn't have a lot of energy and we weren't playing the games. And he's kind of pulled the rein. He's kind of given him the reins. So and the we're starting to get these penalties, but we're playing with so much more energy. He's yeah. got to find that balance. So the somewhere. trade-off has been we found cohesiveness, like we yeah. talked about before. We found a little bit of coordination as a team. I but mean, you it's can see the energy. They're pumping each other up. It's having good returns, but we're also it's, go it's going too far. I mean, essentially, I mean, that's kind of what happened with uh, number 24 tonight, I think. Elmer is just letting it get go too far, you know. So – well, that's going to be an unfortunate side effect for the Round Valley Oaks as well. Elmer getting ejected with two personal uh, penalties, two un, um, unsportsmanlike or unnecessary roughness calls that he had tonight is going to put him out of the game next week, yeah. which it, is not a time is, that you want to see. Is two a hard and fast rule for an ejection? Yep. Because – One's a warning essentially, right? It's like a technical in basketball, yeah. right? Because yeah. we had multiple on one player a few weeks ago, and he never got ejected, and we were – No, it, it is. You're supposed to – when it's when it's flagrant, that's the word I was going to say. Is okay. is it flagrant in nature that changes it like a technical in basketball when it's a flagrant yeah. foul? And right. See the one that I I'm just going to tell you the call that triggered the ejection or set up the ejection was the taunting yep. after the touchdown. Absolutely. Um, you know I understand you made a big play and you're happy about it, but there's certain lines you don't cross. It, the AIA tells us very clearly do not allow players to go out and act in behavior that encourages the other team to retaliate and they have a term for it it's escaping me um, but and we're supposed to watch for it it's a point of emphasis so well well and it, it is and it should be at all levels I I was helping with my son's flag football team this year, and after the games, that's what I brought him in, and we talked after. We kneeled over there at the in the end zone, and I said, guys, we have to win gracefully. We have to win and enjoy it, but you have to win gracefully. You can't taunt. You can't celebrate. We can't do that. Even at that level, yeah. it's going to come out. And so it was a conversation that we had there. It's a conversation we're having now, and so it's not anything. It happens at all ages, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Well, and I blame I blame the upper levels of football, college, and, where celebratory and stuff the NFL. is is glamorized. Yeah, where you know that stuff is televised. It's good news copy. It's great on TV. The problem is, is when you get down at the high school level, the NFHS, AIA, they say no. No, well, no, no. Well, listen to the sportsmanship pledge. Listen to the thing that we announced at the beginning of area contest. So I get, I get that. And so, unfortunately, the Round Valley Elks will be without Elmer next week, uh, which will change their game both offensively and defensively as we go into the playoffs. And so, um, Coach Baca and, and his staff have a lot of, a lot of work to do. They got a lot of stuff getting ready. But guys, we got a playoff game at home. The seniors were excited about it. I know we're excited about it. Brett Jordan's still partying down there. Yeah, he just let Emily knock him over, and she's uh, running around with his helmet on. I was on. just what about to say, would you, <laughs> would you please not allow your daughter to hurt our current <laughs> starting quarterback? Dan, stop. Hey, hey, guys, she came home on the weekend. She's glad to be here. She's excited. Muth, Muth she, running up the left side. <laughs> she finds the 40. Oh, and, and she's lost something. I don't know what's going. Anyway, guys, well, I don't know if you can see it. It's it, way yeah, down there. Her There's a ball it's, cap on the field, and it's all over. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to work the word crease in there, Dan. I really was. <laughs> was she? If she, she bobbed and weaved, crease. I was going to yeah. say. And Emily found a crease, and she scored. She got touchdown. Anyway, guys, we better wrap this thing up. We got stuff to do. It's flag football in the morning. There's a wrestling tournament tomorrow. Volleyball, two way North Regional Tournament 10, in ten thirty. 10.30, 10 right? 10, and then if Round Valley wins, they play at 4. If they lose, they play at 2.30. Guys, there's a lot going on in St. John's. I I want, I, I, I don't know anybody's watching here, guys, but our hearts go out to, to the Jensen and the Kirk family um, of St. John's. They, um, Their daughter lost the, her battle that she was having in their funerals tomorrow. And so there's just a lot. Sorry, there's a lot going on in St. John's tomorrow, and it made me think of that as well like see we're already getting set up for flag football here it's just a lot going on and so guys as we wrap things up here in the dome um a huge thanks to our crew tonight rustin and gareth down on the down on the field working it that way mr scott madrid as well working working the the microphone dan muth coming and visiting us for a minute we're glad you could hey gl i'm glad you guys invited me back appreciate it hey maybe next week i don't know what you got going on I but apparently we're in the dome on friday so. postseason so i'm not getting any postseason so if you guys want me back hey all right, guys. I'll be more than happy to sit down with Scott, 
Maybe we can tag team some stats and get some commentary going. Hey, and don't forget Lowy Hunt, Lowy and Tom on the main camera here tonight. And so, guys, from Let's Go Elks, a huge thanks to everybody that helps make this thing happen. It's a family. It's a herd. It's crazy. It's nuts. Uh, thanks for being part of the herd. And thanks to all of our amazing um, partners and advertisers that we have. You guys make it happen, especially right now in the Lackey Reynolds postgame show. So, guys, from the Dome, I'm Wesley McBride. This is Ethan Holiday. Dan Muth. What? Dan, Dan the truth man Muth. Guys, be safe. Have a good weekend and make good choices. You've been watching Let's Go Elks. Bye, guys.